Hey legends, it's your main man, Kronos, back with another pulse-pounding episode of What If Deku Had The Gamer Powers. Part 6 is here, and trust me, it's a game changer. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and let's dive into this virtual hero world together. Shout out to my legendary crew the support you've shown is next level, and I can't thank you enough. You're the reason this journey is epic. Ready to rock. Let's roll. Chapter 22. 13 Sensei and Izawa Sensei let us inside. The entry was a white brick path, lined with trees on either side. There was a thick mesh net behind the trees, obscuring what was beyond them. The path led to a set of stairs that descended down a good 30 meters, and ended in what looked like a food court. But a huge one, for a hundred or more people and all around it, with a giant fountain in the middle, spread out over at least a square kilometer. I designed this place, 13 told us, with more than a little help, to make my dream come true. The unforeseen simulation joint, or SJ for short, has just about any sort of environment you can expect to encounter in Japan. Urban with multi-story buildings and a working train system. Suburban with houses, mansions, and even a small-scale indoor shopping mall. A field of grasslands, rice paddies, and small forests. A lake that can be fresh or salt water and has a wave machine. Rocky and mountainous terrain. We looked out of the vast training arena. It was almost like a theme park, but without the rides. 13 gestured for us to follow, and started down the stairs. We can also control the weather, the rescue hero continued, from rain. A modest downpour began to drench the suburban zone. To snow. The rain stopped, and snow fell on the mountain region instead. And hail, lightning, fog, and even small-scale tornadoes. We can also control the lighting to simulate any time of day or night. The USJ can simulate almost any kind of disaster in any weather conditions. It is at least in my opinion, the best facility in the world for rescue training. At least in my opinion, anyway. We reached the bottom of the stairs, and it felt even bigger. So, here is what we will be doing today, 13 said brightly, turning back to us, you will be dividing into four teams of five. Two of the teams will go with me, and two will go with Izawa Sensei. You will alternate between being the rescuers, and acting as the victims. After the exercises this morning, we will come back here for lunch, and you will divide into four different teams, and repeat the process for the afternoon. Now you might be wondering how you are going to divide up, 13 continued, or you might have recognized the box behind me. We will be using these to split you up, but perhaps not in the way you are expecting. 13 lifted up a box. It appeared to be the box from the Heroes vs. Villains exercise. Each of you will take a ball again, a through T. But only the A through each balls matter. For morning training, whoever picks the A, B, C, and D balls, will be the team leaders. They will draft the rest of you onto their teams, and will also be in charge of their teams for the exercises. After lunch, we will reselect teams, with E through H acting as the leaders. However for the afternoon, the new leaders must not select anyone who was on their teams in the morning. Their team pause, and looked around at us, teamwork and team structure are the key points to this exercise. The leaders must lead, and the team members must follow. Leaders must gather data, both on their own and from their team members. Don't just blindly give orders, be sure to listen to the input of your comrades. But in the end, you are in charge, and you must be firm and decisive. On the other side, team members almost have it harder. You need to follow directions. And you also need to know when not to follow. What's that mean? Ishido san asked. Well, let's say you were sent to search a partially collapsed house, 13 said after a moment's consideration, and along the way you saw someone under beam. So you decide to rescue that person instead. This might be the right move, the house could be empty. Or it could be the wrong choice, your team leader knows there is someone in the house, and already have someone else rescuing the person under the beam. By ignoring orders, the person in the house might not make it. Ideally you would report it in. Find out what your leader knows and his plan. Unfortunately, there also might not be time for that. This is a class, as always Sensei interjected. While we will be teaching you about the basics of rescues, we will also be grading you on how you do as a leader or team member. What do you mean by the basics of rescues? Ami prompted with a thoughtful frown. Mizuno Sensei has taught you about first aid, hasn't she? 13 looked at her. You know my mother. I know most trauma surgeons in Japan. 13 sounded a little sad about that. She is very talented, and I respect her. But for today, we are not going to worry about first aid and potential injuries. Just on finding victims and freeing them. I don't get it, Hagaker san admitted. Normally, you have to be careful when you rescue someone, I said. Moving the person, or even just the rubble trapping them, it could make things worse. It could be the only thing keeping them from bleeding out or holding their organs in place. Sue and I shared a look. And I could tell that Ami, Mikoto, and Momo noticed. Exactly, 13's tone picked up, but that is not always the case. And there will be cases where even if moving them could be bad, leaving them would be certain death. Like a fire, Todoroki said softly. Yes, 13 confirmed, it becomes less important that a victim might bleed out in 5 minutes, if they will definitely burn in 2 minutes. For today, we won't worry about that. Just find your trapped classmates, and remove them from the situation without making things worse. I nodded, and so did most of my classmates. 13 held out the box, and we lined up. Hagaker-chan was the leader of Team Aami had pulled B. Jiro-san was holding the sea bowl. 
and Kirishima Khan was the last of the morning's captains. The rest of us formed a semicircle before the captains. Hagakur Chan's gloves and boots gave the impression that she was looking around at all of us. Hmm, she said, I'll take Tokoyami. Echeko, Ami said immediately, but she gave me a regretful look. Kinsan, Ajiro san decided after a few seconds' consideration. Alright. Kirishima barked, Todoroki. Then there was a pause, and 13 sensei said, the second round, and the fourth, you will draft in reverse order. So that means I go again. Kirishima prompted. As always sensei nodded, and so Kirishima called, great. Ida. Midoriya san, Ajiro selected me, and I moved to join Cassandra behind him. Momo, Ami said. Then through girl chat she added, sorry Izuku. If you could openly use all of your powers, you would have been an obvious first choice. It's okay I assured her. Since it sounds like you are selecting teams all might added, young Midoriya, please disband your party for today. It is an unfair advantage. I softly whispered the command to remove everyone. And while we were distracted by that, Hagakur selected both Koda-san and Makoto. Kayoka, Ami chose. Shoji-san, Ajura said. Asui-san. Kirishima selected Su a bit more hesitantly. Then for his last pick said, Mo-chan. Siro-san was the last one to join our team. Ashido-chan, Ami took the acid user. Aoi Amakan, Hagakur called him over, despite not having a choice. Alright, now that the teams are set, 13 told us, here's each team's set of earbuds. Wait, Mo-chan objected, how are Kane and Koda supposed to communicate through these? Koda-kun can speak, as always Sensei reminded her, he just doesn't like to. As for Kane-chan, and really communications in general, that's up to all of you to figure out. Just be thankful we're giving you the earbuds. Logically, you would be very lucky to have something so convenient in a real disaster. Teams A and C come with me, 13 said. Teams B and D will be with us always then. 13 led us to the suburban zone. We will be starting with a flash flood scenario, we were told, and to mix things up a bit, Team A will be playing the victims first. In addition to your classmates, there will also be five animatronic victim robots to find and rescue. Team C, you can feel free to discuss general strategies while I get Team A into position. Hagaker's team followed him, and the five of us forged a loose huddle. I want to explain my reason for picking each of you, and my expectations, Ajiro-san told us, first of all, Kane san Your power to sense movement will be invaluable in finding the victims. Midoriya-san, your power should allow you to both move rubble and temporarily act as a support against additional collapse. He trailed off as water began to run down the fake street. Then he continued. Shoji-san, you can also move rubble well, thanks to your extra limbs. And your extra eyes and ears will make you a good secondary searcher. Siro-san. I get it, you picked me because you didn't have many other choices, Siro sighed with a wry grin. No, Ijiro san shook his head, I was torn between you and Shoji san in the third round. You have mobility, climbing and swinging with your tape. And while Midoriya san can keep things from falling apart, you can actually hold them together without having to be there. The only reason I picked Shoji san first was for his sign language. I wanted to make sure we had two people who could converse with King san. Not only did I get that, I got the three best signers in the class, including King san herself. For strategy, he switched gears slightly, I think Kane san and Midoriya san should start together. The other three of us will go solo. We will split up and start searching, Kane san and Shoji san with their quirks, and the rest of us just using our regular eyes and ears. I glanced at Cassandra, and we nodded at each other. Cassandra's power would make a good cover for Kai detection. Which wouldn't sense the robots, so we needed her power and Shoji's extra ears. I also had my clairvoyance, though I was hesitant to use it, since Hagakur was out there. The water was up to her ankles by the time 13 returned. Okay, as I said this is the flash flood scenario, 13 told us, the height of the water will ebb and flow, as will the speed it moves. Your goal is to find the 10 trapped victims, and move them to the safe point on the top of that market. You have 30 minutes, beginning now. Izuku Midoriya. Health. 654-696. Energy. 803-1186. I was more tired than I would have expected, by the time we broke for lunch. We ran five scenarios, for the first four the teams alternated between being rescuers and victims like 13 had explained. But for the last one, we were all rescuers. Instead there were 40 of the victim robots spread out through the town. They didn't look particularly human, but they breathed, had a heartbeat, some could talk, and some could walk. And they were heavy, even with drive one or two on. And I didn't want to use a higher level, since we were going to do this all day. At least we had some time to rest when we were playing the victims. How did it go for you? Kayoka asked as Cassandra and I joined Ami's team at one of the six-person tables. We had been served a meal of hot dogs and fresh fruit. Not unlike the amusement park the USG resembled. But Cassandra signed. Yes, I agreed, we were able to find everyone, and Ajiro-san did a good job of directing us. I think he has instructed martial arts classes Cassandra added, and I translated for Ishido. Su sat at the table behind me, and Mo-chan slid in next to her. We did a rock slide in the mountain zone first, Su told us, then they cranked the snow up, and we had to do a blizzard rescue. Did you do okay? I looked her over. It was tough, she admitted, but the thermal gel helped. 
Well done this morning, everyone, 13 called out, in fact, you may have been the best group of first years I've worked with. So for the afternoon, we are going to adjust things, just a little. The basic structure will remain the same. But this time I want you all to pay attention to your bedside manner, so to speak. Bedside manner. You need a sense that dubiously, as in how doctors treat their patients. Exactly, 13 agreed, just like a doctor, it's important to consider what you say, and how you present yourself. If you act worried, or complain, it will make things harder for the victims. They may panic, and that will make your job harder. Worse if. I miss the rest of the 13's explanation has my head split open. Figuratively, not literally. I was not prone to headaches. I had them before, usually as part of some other illness. But never this bad, and not since I got the gamer. Now it felt like someone had driven a rusty axe into my forehead horizontally, and was pounding it with a sledgehammer. I glanced around, and noticed Makoto was holding her temples, too. Then the lights flickered, and the headache faded to a dull ache, just barely nauticable and unpleasant. The fountain behind us sputtered and stopped. What's that? Shoji Sen still had extra eyes at the end of two of his arms from searching, and now one of them was pointing up the stairs. In front of the entrance, a purple-edged cloud of black mist was pouring out of thin air. Then a hand appeared from the mist. He was tall and gangly. He was dressed in a long-sleeved black shirt and matching pants and shoes. His hair was white, and his skin had a grayish tint. And to be honest, was in need of serious moisturizer. Vicious red eyes glared up from between the fingers of the hand covering his face. And not his own hand either. No, this guy had 14 severed hands clamped on his head, neck, shoulders, body, and arms. He was followed closely by a woman in a skin-tight, black and gray bodysuit. Her costume was torn in places and looked rotten in others. Her skin was also gray, but a deeper gray that was obviously makeup. Her hair was red on one side and blue on the other. She was also wearing a little domino mask, and casually swung a heavy-looking sledgehammer. Dozens more followed, most notably the huge bird-faced man with the exposed brain. And I couldn't see them all, and didn't know most of them. But a few I did recognize. Finally, the mist resolved itself into a humanoid shape with glowing yellow eyes. He was standing to the right of the hands guy, and Sledge Woman was on his left. What's this? Kirishima set down his half-eaten dog and started to walk towards the stairs, some part of the training. Stop, as always Sensei Bart, scaring the rest of the class. But not me, I was already there. Those are villains, I said, sheepies. Gregor. Bug Weasel. I know a few others. They're low-level thugs, but if they are here, I have to. Where's All Might? Hans Guy demanded in a high-pitched grating voice. I don't know, Sledge Woman said, her Japanese betraying a heavy American accent, maybe he's in the toilet. Sorry to say, as always Sensei didn't sound sorry at all, but All Might's not here. So maybe you could just show yourselves back out. What? Hans Guy shrieked, I built up a battalion. Let Harley level up her squad. Did that stupid side quest to get the schedule. And now the boss isn't even here. All we've got is a support character like 13, a low-ranked troll eraser head, and a bunch of ads. A shiver went down my spine, and it wasn't gamer's mind calming me. The way he was talking my friends all looked at me, no doubt thinking something similar. Even if he is not famous, the mist said, Eraserhead is a high priority target. Sensei will be quite pleased if we can eliminate him. It's okay, Miss Doss, Sledge Girl put a comforting hand on his arm, we can just kill a bunch of the kids. That means All Might failed as both the hero and their teacher. That will hurt him, right? He glared at her, and very deliberately put his hand on her face. Then, for just a moment, his eyes looked relieved. Then his stare returned, and the madness seemed to deepen. That's it, Harley, he seemed to realize, this must be the sort of boss fight where you have to kill a bunch of minions for the real boss shows up. Analyze, I whispered, my need to know getting desperate. Name. Tamura Shigaraki. Race. Human, quirk metagene positive. Age. 20. Level. 29. Active title. Leader of the League of Villains. Quirk. Decay. Anything Tamura touches with all five fingers, toes, on a given hand, foot, begins to break down and rot away to nothing. The only known ways to stop this are to sever the decaying part or disable his quirk, though some healing quirks may be able to slow the effect on living creatures. He cannot control this quirk or shut it off. Health. 720 720ths. Stamina. 508 511 Kai. Minus 600 minus 600. He didn't have the gamer. Maybe he was just that obsessed with games. But then why didn't his power work on the sledge woman? I glanced at her. Harley. 404, target not found. Why aren't the alarms going off? Momo asked. I slipped my plate off the table, telekinetically pushing the food off. My phone isn't working, Ashido sent said. I handed a plastic dish to Tsu, and then signed a single word. All might I shouted loudly into guild chat. And for a moment, my headache intensified again. Did anyone hear that? I asked, vaguely enough that the rest of the class shouldn't get suspicious, but hoping the others knew what I meant. Cass and Ami both shook their heads. Don't bother, a wolf-headed villain shouted, as long as Jammer's working, no signals are getting out, not even telepathy quirks. They told you to speak. Shigaraki turned around and placed his hand on the taunter's chest. 
Like Annalise had said, the victim gasped as his body began to turn into grey dust. Moments later, all that was left was a pile of what looked like ash. Anyone else want to spoil our plans and quirks to the other raid party? He barked. 13. As always Sensei said softly while that was happening, I will hold them off. Take the kids and get them out one of the service entrances. Toroki kun once I am on the steps, put up a wall of ice behind me. Sensei, you can't, Ami said. Let us help you, Mo Chan countered. Your power isn't suited for such a large group, I argued. You use stealth against individuals or small groups. You can't be a pro if you are a one trip pony, he smirked as he lowered his visor. What are you waiting for? Shigaraki complained, kill them. A racer had charged the stairs. So did the villains. Before either group reached the steps, I got the plate back from Sue. Holding it by a very specific spot, I pointed it at first villain in the pack. Hogwarts smash. I shouted, and the plate rocketed at Gregor. It struck him between the eyes, and his head snapped back. Then he recovered, and caught the plate before it fell. What was that supposed to? He trailed off speaking and dropped the plate. His forearms went limp and he crashed face first onto the steps, Sue's oil paralyzing him. Dadling railgun. Makoto yelled, and three of the thugs went down, probably with broken legs. Shaven spray. Ami's water bullets did less damage, just knocking the four villains she hit over. Izawa turned to glare at us, but kept moving forward. We can at least in the herd a bit first, Nikoro told him. Then he started climbing, and a vertical glacier hid him from view. Let's move, 13 told us sternly, and once we are outside, Itakan, I want you to run as fast as you can towards the main campus. The space hero disconnected something from her wrist, and passed it to Ida-san. Keep triggering this. Once you are outside of this jammer villain's range, this will put you through to UA's emergency line. Tell them what is happening here. I'm sorry, but I cannot allow that the voice of the mist echoed closely, and the next second he appeared in our path. Like we're going to let you not let us. Kirishima shouted, jumping forward. Mochan immediately joined him, her red line broadsword appearing in her hands. The mist gestured, and they vanished. Then it began to flow over the rest of us. I pushed back as hard as I could with my TK. Not when our other comrades are waiting to meet you all, the mist's voice continued ominously. Then I was fooling. My vision filled with white. Chapter 23 I braced myself as I fell, ready to roll when I hit the ground. But it was the ground that gave way instead of me. Snow blasted out in every direction, the light powder was at least 40 centimeters deep before I hit it. I realized I was still in the USJ, in the mountain zone. Post the blizzard Sue had mentioned, the rocky terrain was covered with a thick layer of white and cold. Mizuku, Ami said from behind me, and I turned to face her. Mizuno, Midoriya. Another familiar voice asked from further up the mountain, but I had to look to recognize who it was. Penyu-san, I waved her over. She jogged down to meet us, but scowled at me. Call me Mochan, she said, but not quite as firmly as normal. She glanced around uncertainly. What happened? She asked. The teleporter sent us here. But I don't see Kirishima, I answered, he must be somewhere else. Which means our other classmates are probably spread out around the USJ. Why do you think that? Mochan prompted. Because he said he was sending us to his allies, Ami said first. Then she folded her fingers and closed her eyes. I feel people coming, she said, but all the snow makes it hard. Kai detection, I whispered as she said that. There were 16 Kai sources cautiously approaching us. And while I couldn't recognize all of my classmates by their specific Kai signatures, I could tell that none of these were familiar. Why aren't they attacking? I mumbled, why are they hiding behind the rocks and snow? What's that mean? Mo Chan asked softly. They have us surrounded, I half answered, half considered, and surprised. They have us outnumbered 5 to 1. And we don't know what they can do. Though I might recognize some of them when I see them, that shouldn't be enough. Izuku. Ami tried to break me out of my reverie. I looked at her and realized it. We don't know what they can do, I said, but if Ami is here, then the reverse must also be true. Isn't it a bit of a stretch? Mo Chan asked. I don't think so, I shook my head, why else would they send Ami, who can control ice, to a peak covered in fresh snow? Maybe he didn't see it. I pointed down to Square, where some of the others were still barely visible. But that would be foolish, not paying attention. Maybe he can't control his power that well, but the fact that he brought this many people and spread them out like this, that would seem to prove that his quirk is both powerful and precise. No, the most likely possibility is that they don't know what our abilities are. They might have guessed that Ami can control water based on her costume. The quirks tend to be specialized. Focus. Even that she can control both water and ice is connected to their temperature. That's why it is ice water. So they are all holding back, because they are afraid we have some amazing quirks, Mo Chan nodded. Then she smirked, which we do. But still, how do we handle so many? Ami, I looked at her, do you want to build a snowman? What was that? Kurajuri asked dubiously, that pressure. I've never been pushed back like that. It kept me from banishing all of the children. No matter. I should be able to handle this many. There was a pink girl who looked like she was going to a party. Two girls covered head to toe, one like a biker and the other like a classic hero in grey and black. Two boys, the one in heavy armor that 13 had called Ida. 
and the other was wearing another traditional costume, with strange orange pauldrons and a helmet. And of course 13, but a rescue specialist was not a threat, regardless of the power of their quirk. The Miss Villain sighed slightly. While his quirk could be used for combat, it was messy and he was not fond of the results. Unless he could get the heroes to attack in a way he could redirect. What did you do with the students? 13 demanded. I have sent them to the locations where my allies are waiting, throughout this facility, Kurajuri answered. Bring them back. The pink girl demanded. I will, Kurajuri said, or perhaps I should say I will collect their bodies once they are unconscious or dead. The pink girl took a step forward. The girl in the gray bodysuit and hood cut her off. Her hands flashed. What was that? The boy with the orange shoulders asked. King Sen said that his body is not right, 13 explained, that he is mostly not there. She said his neck is the only solid part. But to know, the boy grinned under his mask, and pointed one elbow at the villain. Kurajuri's glowing eyes widened. A line of tape shot out, at his neck, his armored anchor to reality. A portal opened, and the tape continued through it, into the back of King. The girl reacted faster than Kurajiri had expected, but the adhesive still connected. The misty gate rotated around her, wrapping her twice before the boy thought to stop. Stay back, 13 ordered, if that mist is the source of his gates, I can take care of it. The fingers on her costume's right glove snapped open, and Black Hull began to suck Kurajiri in. The tape boy ran over to Kane, and began to cut her free with a pallet knife. Kurajiri was pulled closer to 13, but this was what the villain was waiting for. You're too lacking in combat experience, he taunted the space hero, even after watching what I just did, you still thought this would work. The portal opened between them, and the other end was behind 13. The pink girl and the biker started to shout warnings. But even though 13's face was completely hidden, Kurajiri could almost feel the hero's grin. Thought it would work. 13 shot back, I was counting on it. 13's left glove also opened. The hero shifted her stance, one hand pointing at each side of the gate. Kurajiri's eyes widened again, this time in actual fear rather than a trap. The pull of black hole locked the gate in place. The resonance of the gravity fields made the dimension inside the gate shake, including his main body. If he closed this gate, he might end up pulled into black hole before he could open a new one. And even if he did, there was no guarantee that 13 wouldn't do it again. Still he didn't think he had a choice. Except the gate wouldn't close. It was locked in place. And so was he. 13 had him. And they didn't leave it at that. The pink girl circled around, and grabbed his armored collar with her right hand. Then 13's glove snapped close. Please don't try anything, the student told him, I don't know what this metal is, and given what you are doing, I'd have to use my strongest acid. She held out her other hand, and a yellowish fluid dripped from her fingertips. It melted the concrete with a noxious stench. Then the biker girl unzipped a panel over her stomach, and drew out two devices. You can let him go, Ashido-san, she said, slapping one of the devices onto his armor. This is a shaped charge on a dead man's switch on a 5 second timer. If I let go, or move more than 10 meters away, the explosion will breach the armor and seriously damage whatever is on the other side. She showed him the second machine, she was tightly holding the button down. Not my preferred methods, 13 said darkly, but given the circumstances, good idea, Yoi Rosa-chan. 13 stepped closer. Now, bring my students back, the hero instructed. No, Kurjuri refused simply. No. The tape boy looked surprised, glancing at 13, Ashido, and Yoi Rosa. Even if you kill me, it will be quicker and less painful than what Shigaraki Tamura would do to me, the villain said flatly, and your heroes. You won't kill me. Fine, 13 relaxed, then turned slightly, Yidakun, go. There is a service exit at the back of the suburb section. We will keep him here. Don't do it, Kurjuri warned, try, and I will send the six of you ten kilometers straight up, my safety be damned. You are suicidal. Gyoi Rozu asked, shifting her grip on the detonator. I have no desire to die. But if I allow one of you escape to get help, I will no more survive than if I bring your classmates back to regroup. Then he took a step closer, and his voice grew darker, and did you forget we are jamming your signals? That your device never worked in the first place. He couldn't see the biker's face, but her posture suggested an annoyed look. She took her finger off the trigger. And the machine on his neck began to beep. Then beep a bit faster. She hit the trigger again. You may have blocked radio waves and superhuman communications, she told him, but we can still hear each other. This runs off an ultrasonic frequency. That's the reason for the distance requirement. Kurajiri held up his hands and backed off. Both sides knew they were in a standoff that couldn't last. It was broken by the sound of shattering crystals behind the heroes. Izawa Shadow was annoyed. Mostly at the villains. Partly at his students for bending his instructions. Even though he should have expected that from Midoriya and the kids who hung around with him. But also, he was annoyed with himself. He claimed to be logical and rational. Yet here he was charging a group of over 20 unknown villains. And that was after Midoriya, Mizuno, and Misaka had taken out eight of them. Eraserhead was a street-level hero. Like he had implied to the students, despite his preference for stealth, he did have to handle gangs. Five, even ten junkers like these shouldn't be a problem. Especially since the four-armed mutant was out of the picture, Asui's paralyzing oil should take him out for almost an hour. 
unless his mutation gave him some sort of resistance. Better to plan for only 30 minutes. No, the real trouble was the four in the middle. Unlike the rest of these scrub villains, Harley, Mistas Apostrophe, the Missy Guy, and the Bird Brain didn't seem worried. They held themselves more certainly. Hell, the one with the exposed brain wasn't even moving. Shooting squad, one of the mix ordered, take him down. We have the high ground. A handful of them stepped forward. One with fingertips like gun barrels. Another like a fat mummy wearing that looked like a mad scientist combined a gas mask and a flamethrower. They raised various appendages, pointing at him. Azawa resisted the urge to roll his eyes. Instead, he activated his quirk. The villains were surprised or scared when nothing happened, and he raced closer. Then something hit him hard in the chest. It only moderately hurt, like a weak punch. But then he felt his torso begin to seize up. He glanced down. A mud pellet had hit his shirt, and was starting to spread. Following it back, he saw a female villain in purple, with hair like cement tubes, had broken off from the others. Weren't you idiots listening to Kurajiri sama She complained, shooting again, that's Racerhead. He can shut off the quirks of anyone he looks at, especially if you twit stay bunched up like that. He shut off her quirk. The next round mud pellets still hit him, but they hit softer and immediately dropped off. And the one already on him dried, cracked, and flaked away. Darn it, the petrifier complained. Then we'll just take him in close combat, one of the other punks shouted. He can't look at all of us if we surround him. Great idea, as always said mockingly. His scarf wrapped around the thick and elongated neck of a skull mask where, after the villain charged him. Then he snapped it to the side, and sent the villain tumbling down the steps with a series of satisfying snaps and crunks. Too bad that's my specialty, too, Eraser had continued, kicking another muck in the face, and it means your shooting squad are now my allies. He finally reached the top of the stairs. Somebody thinks he's pretty cool, Mistas apostrophe said angrily. He kind is, Harley added, sing song. That's the worst part the hands were agreed, when they live up to the hype. Not that this guy has much hype to live up to. If he expected to get under Izawa's skin, it didn't work. Eraserhead was not famous, because he didn't want to be. The woman with gorilla arms charged him. Unlike the others she didn't falter when he shut off her quirk, and her arms turned back to normal. She attacked with more skill than most of the punks. Still not enough, he wrapped her in his scarf. Then threw her into the petrifier, his quirk just recovered. Kurajiri, the leader turned back to now named Miss Villain, you know what to do. Of course, Shigaraki Tamar. Then his foggy body folded in on itself and he was gone. Running away. Racer demanded, or maybe getting reinforcements. No, Shigaraki shook his head and grinned darkly under the hand covering his face. He's going to send your little one-ups to meet our other friends. As always stirred a glance back, and saw the mist appear, blocking 13 and the students. Hey Mistas. Harley pouted, can I have this guy? I've been killing to meet him. Azawa cleared out three more of the mooks, sweeping them into another who was about to regain his feet. Sure, the leader decided, have fun. But don't screw it up. Thanks, pudding, she hopped up and pecked him on the cheek, her hand lingering. I told you not to call me that, he complained, slapping her hand away. Harley just giggled madly, and left at her sledge. She cartwheeled towards Eraser. He stared at her, but she didn't seem to notice. So what do you want with me? He asked, that Shigaraki guy not enough for you. Please, she scoffed, one, you're not an Yoda of the man Mistas is. And two, don't try psychological attacks on me. I don't like fighting the unarmed. His capture weapon snaked out and wrapped around the haft of the hammer. He tried to pull it out of her hands, but Harley was stronger than she looked. Instead she twisted the sledge around, first pulling him closer, and then using the tension to help her vault towards him. No, she continued as her kick narrowly missed his stomach, it's just that you and me are like two sides of the same coin. Boy, girl. Hero, villain. Your quirk shuts off quirks at a distance, and you have to turn it on. My quirk shuts them off on contact, but is always on unless I concentrate really hard. Like when I let Kurajiri bring me here. His eyes widened under his goggles. That's why you look familiar, he said. You're that American psychiatry student who vanished eight months ago. The one who was studying why quirks make some people crazy. Harley Quill. Queen. Something. Ahem, she sounded annoyed. That is physiological and societal impacts of quirks on mental and social development, by Dr. Harleen Quinzel. Harleen Quinzel. Villain name. Harley Quinn. Quirk. Scrubs. Harley's quirk unravels any superpower that touches her. Want to shoot her with a lightning quirk. Pick her up with telekinesis. Too bad. And if she touches you, your quirk won't work until she stops. This even works on most non-quirk supernatural powers, even if Harley herself doesn't know that. She can let a power work on her, but it takes a lot of mental focus and effort on Harley's part. Weren't you supposed to be blonde? Azawa asked looking at her half blue, half red hair. The blonde was a dye, she rolled her eyes, to give patience the veneer of normalcy. But after I met Sensei and Miss Toss, and realized just how pointless that was, I let my natural colors come back. Shigaraki began tapping his foot. Racerhead was getting anxious, too. The girl was matching him, move for move. He wasn't sure if his quirk would trump hers, but he doubted it, and it wouldn't matter either way. 
If he could focus on her, and not have to worry that the other two might make a move, he could probably take her out. Meanwhile, the mix were starting to head down the stairs. Which was less of a direct worry for him, but instead he had to worry about the students. He wouldn't have thought a store-bought sledgehammer would have matched his capture weapon. But it had weight, and she was able to keep hold of it and swing it around like a toy. And she moved with the dancer's grace, using the hammer as both the weapon and the support. He dodged another card ruling kick at his chin. He tried to grab her arm, but she twisted the haft into his wrist to escape. Harley, Shigaraki Bart, are you just playing with him? No way, Miss Das, she complained, he's actually pretty good. And it doesn't actually matter if I shut his cork off. He doesn't need it to fight. Fine, he grunted, we can't waste any more time. No more. Kill him. The last villain finally moved. It let out a noise somewhere between an eagle's shriek and a human's shout. And then it vanished. Misaka Makoto found herself falling. It wasn't a long fall, and fortunately it was into water. She pushed back to the surface, and began to question her costume choices. It was absorbing the water, weighing her down. And that wasn't counting the almost 2 kilograms of metal discs, both hidden and visible across her body. She could try to lift the coins with her power, to counteract them. But if Makoto messed up even a little, she might drain her electricity reserves into the water. She started to look around, treading water as best she could. Looking for the shore, the boat she had seen when 13 was pointing out the zones from the stairs. What she saw first, and was not looking, for was the shark-faced villain swimming right for her. Mouth open, teeth in serious need of brushing. With no immediate or better options, she prepared to shock him. Before she had to, a shadow appeared under the villain. Sai's feet slammed his jaw closed with a snapping crunch Makoto heard even above the water. As the shark sank, Sayu hooked Mikoto around the waist and began to swim away at high speed. Sorry to interfere, the frog girl said. I was coming to bring you back to the boat, but it looked like you froze up there. I did, I guess, Mikoto admitted. I don't have great control of my power when I am submerged like this, so I worried I would drain myself, or that someone else might be around, which you were, and I'd zap them by accident. The electrokinetic side, since we started training with Izuku, I was hoping I would get some sort of talent to overcome my water issues. But so far, I haven't. She deliberately kept her explanation couched in vague terms, in case someone in the water was listening. Sayu understood. Same thing for me, Asui admitted, but with the cold. We'll both have to keep working on it. I guess that makes Ami the natural enemy of both of us, Mikoto chuckled, then a bit more sharply added, in more ways than one. You too? Sayu prompted carefully. Not like you're Ami or Chako, Mikoto said, but he's cute and also cut, and nice. To be honest I wouldn't have thought he was my type, based on the crush I had in middle school. But the more time I spend around him, and listen to you ladies talk. Well, I don't see Ami as an enemy in that respect, Sai reminded her. You said that, Mikoto agreed, but the thing is my parents had a friend back in college. Kaminari something. Naraku. Naruto. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it started with a Na and then one of the Ross series Kana. Anyway, the three of them were inseparable for most of their first and second years. Both Kaminari-san and my dad confessed to mom in their third year. She went on a few dates with both of them. Obviously, she fell for my dad. They tried to stay friends with him, but things just weren't the same, and they drifted apart. They still regret it. And sometimes my mom teases my dad that she picked by flipping a coin, Mikoto said dryly. She never does it in anger, and we all know she doesn't mean it, but it still makes me wonder. Maybe in a parallel universe I'm Kaminari Mikoto, and my quirk is weaker, or just different. I get different, Sayu tilted her head even while swimming, but why weaker? I get my electrokinesis from my mom, Mikoto explained, except my ek is measurably stronger than mom's and still developing. My dad has a magnetic quirk, and my ability to use sack from magnetic things is leaps and bounds above my mom's. So I think I also got some of my dad's quirk mixed in, since electricity and magnetism go together. That makes sense, Sayu agreed, as they finally reached the boat. Hiroshima Aijiro was already aboard. He helped Makoto up, but Sayu just climbed up the side on her own. Great, you got her, he sounded relieved. We were worried because you splashed down so much further from the boat than we did. Is there anyone else? Mikoto asked them. I didn't see anyone else, he shook his head. No, just two of you hit the water, Sayu confirmed, but there are them. She pointed at lumps in the water. Villains, probably a dozen of them. All around the boat. Why are they hanging back though? Sayu whispered thoughtfully. They're frightened of our manliness, Kirishima declared. Yes, Mikoto said slowly, interrupting Sayu right before she dope slapped Kirishima. Not about the manliness, she explained at Sai's incredulous look. Which given Mikoto was still learning to read the frog girl's expressions, said something about her leveling credulity. But if they sent you and me here, Mikoto continued, they probably don't know who we are. Yeah, Sai agreed, the only thing worse would have been if it was Ami or Todoroki-sen. He did save the two of us really easily, Kirishima nodded, and took one of them out in the process. So what do we do? Sai asked. The bull probably runs, Mikoto said very loudly, her hands moving in patterns, for when they have to do rescue training where the boat is moving. So you come and help me get it running, Kirishima-kun. And Sai, keep an eye out. 
Sure, Asi agreed, signing back her response to the real plan. Kirishima looked confused, but let Makoto drag him below deck. Sayu jumped up on top of the cabin, and began to look around. Start moving in, one of the villains instructed, while the other two are inside. A moment later, the boat shuddered, and a puff of smoke quenched its way up from the stern. Come on, another Muk shouted and they hurried closer, we can't let them get moving. Makoto, Sai shouted out a warning. It needs a minute to warm up, Kirishima's voice echoed back. We don't have a minute, Kiro, Sai insisted. The propeller began to turn, and the boat began to creep forward. The villains swam faster, determined not to let them pick up speed. The first of them reached the boat. Now? Sai shouted. The next moment, a craggy fist punched out the back of the hull, just above the waterline. Then Kirishima jumped as hard as he could, scrambling onto the wooden steps. One of the villains looked through the hole, and saw wires pulled out of some other part of the ship's electrical system, wrapped around Makoto's arm, sparking visibly. She smirked at him, then extended her other hand through the gap. Shy he started to complain, but his body seized up as an obscene level of voltage released into the lake. Makoto did her best to hold the electricity within a few meters of the boat. She kept it up for a second, then another, until Tsai called out the all clear. Then she sighed and slumped from the ache and exhaustion of channeling the extra power. Mikoto reconnected the boat's steering. So now what, Kirishima asked, once they reached shore, rejoined 13 sensei and the others. You can if you want to, Mikoto sounded annoyed, but this throbbing in my skull has been getting worse. Whoever is jamming our phones is closer now, and I am going to use this interference to track him or her down, and knock their lights out. Sounds like a good idea to me, Sai agreed. I'm in, Kirishima confirmed. It feels like he's close to the base of the mountain zone, probably hiding out in the valley crevice. The three teens took off, as swiftly and silently as they could. What the hell? That wasn't there five minutes ago. The villains had finally made their move. Only to find while they were preparing out of sight, the hero students had constructed a large snowman. The bottom sphere of frost was over two meters in diameter. Perches side by side atop it, and slightly squished together were two, 1.5 meter balls. A third ball that size rested atop them, and where the stomach balls met the chest ball, large triangular arms of ice jutted out. A one-meter head sat on top, with eyes in the mouth hollowed out due to the lack of coal and carrots. What is it? Another muck asked. It's a trap, a strident female voice said. The question is, what kind? A Trojan horse. A distraction while they're on. Or maybe one of them has a puppet master quirk, and is going to attack us with it. So what do we do? Last it, she ordered, if they're inside, or put some bombs in it or something, we just take it out. Fan out and shoot that thing no, you idiots, not in a full circle, or you'll shoot each other. And not from downhill, or it could fall on you. Damn, she muttered more quietly, now I see what that gaging bitch meant. Nine of the sixteen villains, those with ranged quirks, launched a volley of air bullets, bone spurs, and other projectiles into the base of the snowman. They passed right through. So they are in there. Then, down the mountain a few meters and behind one of the larger boulders, there was a loud crunching. Like someone breaking through partially hardened snow. Get them. One of the male villains shouted. Under the snow, under the snowman, I pressed my right hand into snow above us. Holding it up with my tactile TK. Ami's fingers were laced as she concentrated on keeping the snowman in place. Mochan wiggled her finger, her smallest blade agitating the snow and rock to make the noise that was drawing them. Once I felt most of them had moved down the hill, and back in front of the snowman, I tapped Ami's shoulder. Together we pushed with our powers. The five balls of snow began to tumble forward. And while the base was all snow, the other four were full of rocks, to save snow and give them more impact. It was a trick I had learned from Kakin and Longfingers back in elementary school, one of the few times Musatafa had gotten enough snow for a decent snowball fight. Kakin had been especially angry, because of the effect the snow had on his powers. I also sent telekinetic feelers further up the mountain, and reinforced the shell around us. In moments, a miniature avalanche had engulfed most of the villains. Though two of them made it up onto some of the larger boulders, the rest were buried, and judging by their Kai signatures, most were knocked out. I kept a metaphysical eye on the ones still awake, in case they had the means to dig themselves out. The snow under us shifted. Ami pushed us up and out. We emerged standing. Slightly above us was a woman in purple. She appeared to be in her twenties, brunette hair twisting angrily around her head. Next to her was a skinny man with bluish skin. And he had a sphere of ice floating in front of him. So it was all for this, she growled with the same voice that had been giving orders earlier. Actually, we hope to take you all out, Mo Chan said sharply, but Midoriya does like his backups. The cookery flew back to her, and Clarent and her katana appeared. Then she charged the villains. The woman slid down, a brownish cloud forming around her. The man tried to launch the ice at Mochan, but Ami reached out, and the two of the struggled for control of the bowl. What is this? Mochan complained, as her swords were slowed by the cloud. My hair, the villain smirked, I can control it. I always thought I could only control it while it was attached, but that bitch showed me I could do more. Even better, now I have hundreds of threats to slice up my enemies. I grabbed a bunch of snow with both my hands and my power, and threw it into the cloud of hair. 
The villain glared, but Mo Chan's blades began to more easily slice through the now wet strands that had been obstructing them. Tell me, Mo Chan glared, is controlling more harder than controlling a few. Because for me, three swords is tougher than one. I have to spread out my power more and watch them. Took me years to get the hang of it. So if your hundreds of threats become two hundreds of shorter threats. Slice. But three hundreds. Or four hundreds. That's not proper Japanese, Ami whispered. The villain began sweating, and the cloud thinned out. Fine, but it doesn't matter how few there are if I just impale you. The remaining hairs straightened like spears. I swept Mo Chan out of the way, taking the attacks. Health minus 10, energy minus 50. I still was hit by a few, but my TK armor stopped most of them. The villain's eyes widened. Then Clarence Pommel slammed into her temple, and she crumpled. We turned to help Ami. But her opponent was buried in ice up to his waist, even while they struggled with the ice chunk. Mo Chan knocked him out, too. Then Ami sunk them both in up to their necks. The ice crystals in the snow were too small for him to control, it seems, my genius friend deduced. Now what? Mo Chan asked. I checked. Izuka Midriya. Health. 644-696. Energy. 514-1186. Holding everything up had drained me, but I wasn't in danger of running out of energy quite yet. Clairvoyance, I said under my breath. My vision expanded out, and I looked down at the square. Momo and the other were fighting the teleporters still, and other villains were starting to break down the ice wall. And as always Sensei had just taken a hard right from the exposed brain villain, who moved faster than Ida Sen. Racerhead was knocked back over the stairs. His scar snaked out, grabbing a tree, so that he landed on the slightly softer grass beside the steps. The rest of our classmates, spread out though they were, seemed to be doing better. Thirteen and the others who weren't teleported are about to be overrun, I said quickly, we have to get down there and help them. Ami, can you make ice sleds or something? Snowboards, Mo Chan said, at least for me. Moments later we were skidding down the mountain. You are shredding it. Skull snowboarding, LVL1, unlocked. Murdered Pendagon took another mental note. She may have mostly acknowledged the Nihanai's version of her name, especially after learning why father had moved them here and changed their names. But in her heart, Mo Chan still preferred her original name. Even if her namesake was reviled. But while she had no intention of becoming a second knight of betrayal, the blonde swordswoman was careful to observe those around her. Izuka Midoriya seemed like a good person, a genuine nice guy. But he was more than a little mysterious. Like how quickly he had drawn in their female classmates. How quickly his group all grew in strength and skill. And a few minutes ago, he had somehow precisely counted the number of villains surrounding them, even though they were all out of his line of sight. His tactile telekinesis shouldn't have been any help. Now he was able to tell that 13 and that some of their classmates were still in the square. In trouble. When she could only see them as indistinct dots. He hadn't done anything overtly dubious, at least from what she could tell. After the entrance exam and getting to know her a bit more, Martyr trusted Cassandra, who trusted Izuku. Heaven knew Mo Chan had her own secrets. And now was certainly not the time to bring this all up. But Mordred noticed. And she kept an account. Chapter 24. The barrier walls that protected the entrance and stairs from any chaos that might occur in the adjacent urban and mountain zones, had also kept the villains from just walking around Todoroki Sans ice wall. Unfortunately, by the time Ami, Mo Chan, and I had rejoined 13, Momo, Cass, Bushido San, Sirokan, and Aida San in the square, the wall was seriously cracked by Demux. The teleporter was still standing there, glaring at Momo, but he glanced at us angrily. At least I think it was anger, his misface was hard to read. I'm glad you kids are okay, 13 said, what happened? We were teleported up to the mountain, I explained quickly, there were 16 villains waiting, but we were able to take them down, and left them buried in the snow. What about here? King Sen determined the teleporter's weakness, Yida Kun supplied quickly, 13 Sensei trapped him, Ashido Sen captured him, and Yoi Rozu neutralized him with a bomb and a dead man's switch. But he said that he will risk dying fighting us, if any of us try to escape, Momo added. What about the others? Ashido Chan asked. I remembered what I had seen on the way back. Makoto and company defeating the villains, including Tsu and Kirishima Kun, knocking out a trio that resisted Makoto's initial shock. Then the trio heading towards the far side of the base of the mountain, instead of the square. I had a few guesses why they might be doing that. At the field area, Jiro was helping direct Jiro-san and Tokoyami-san. She also took out a couple mooks on her own. There were still four standing attackers, the last time I looked. But my classmates were basically unharmed, and the villains looked nervous. At the back of the suburban area, the villains fell the fastest. Todoroki-san froze ten of the sixteen in one shot. Aoyama-san blasted four, and the last two were taken out by Shoji-kun. Despite the latter having devoted two of his arms to extra eyes and one to a third ear. The urban zone worried me the most. Kodakan was the third strongest in our class, behind Shoji and myself. And was probably stronger than I was, without my Kyrsionic boosts. He was swinging an I-beam like a club, its massive weight neutralized by Echako. Echako was throwing chunks of concrete. 
and Tori Chan, who I did my best not to look at, was sneaking around, tripping them, and generally staying out of Kodakan and Achako's way. Despite that, all three of them had been hit. Tori Chan wasn't bleeding, so she was still hidden. But she would be sporting an invisible shiner. And both of the other two had cuts and bruises. I would have worried about them, except Todoroki Sense Group was heading for the urban area. I wasn't an expert lip reader, but I was able to catch them same train. They were planning to use the zone's working train to get back here faster. Which would also put them in place to be reinforcements for Chako. And Tori-chan and Kodakan. They're fine, I tried to reassure Shido-sen. How do you know? The pinkhead asked dubiously. I hesitated. Should I tell them? Tell my classmates and especially 13 sensei more about my abilities, even if I didn't tell them everything. Reassure them, and also give them better information to deal with this crisis. But more than worrying about telling them, I worried about saying anything in front of the villain. If he escaped, whatever I said would get out. And he was the teleporter. All he needed to do was grab Momo, or find some other method to neutralize the bomb. Please, Mo-chan scoffed, if the looks everyone else is fighting are only half as stupid and inept as the ones we got, they shouldn't have any trouble at all. Only the hair lady was any threat, and she still went down pretty easy. The teleporter flinched. Then he recovered when the ice visibly and audibly cracked. Mizuno-chan, 13 said, can you reinforce that wall? I can control ice, but I can't make it, Ami answered, slightly dismayed, I can hold it in place, and try to push it back together, but I can't make more ice. But you can use the water from the fountain, I said quickly, and Momo, you can make a freezing chemical, right? So we can add to the wall that way. They both nodded at me. Ami gestured, pulling all the water out of the currently disabled decoration, and layering it on both sides of Todoroki's sense barrier, to make it thicker and taller. That resulted in some annoyed shouts from the now soaked villains on the far side. Momo unzipped part of her left sleeve, and a number of small white oblongs fell into the right hand. Don't touch them with your skin, she handed half of them to me. I used Hikaora to heed her warning. Hogwarts smash, I launched them at the left side of the wall, while Momo used a slingshot to shoot them at the right. The water froze over quickly, and the cries of annoyance turned to fear and anger. That should buy us a little time, 13 said, nice work. So what do we do about this guy? Mo-chan asked, pointing one floating blade at the teleporter, should we finish him? The others looked at her in surprise and dismay. But the spike of cold shot down my spine again. Tactically, practically, what she said had merit. I know it's not the hero thing to do, she defended herself, but it's not like we can hold him or knock him out. And the moment we relax, he'll try something. But we can't, I decided, stepping in before anyone else, and not just because it is wrong. He brought them here. He's got to be their exit strategy. If we kill him, the rest will fight that much harder, because they won't have a choice. Well said, 13 complimented me, there are times when a hero might have to kill. Like when the Rhode Island 7 fought the villain who tied the nuclear weapon into his heart, I remembered one of the earliest cases of the first pro heroes, so it would go off after a certain number of beats. 13 nodded and continued, but it should always be the last option, and you have to consider the ramifications. The space hero trailed off as something black sailed through the air and over the wall. At first I thought it was an attack. But I quickly recognized the form and a splash of white around it. Eraser head, Momo gasped. I was already moving. Calculating where he would land. Slowing him with my telekinesis. Which was stronger than when I had tried to do the same to Tsu. I was also stronger, and had my TK aura on top of it. When I caught his always sensei, I wasn't pushed back or knocked over. I quickly but gently set him on the ground. Mo-chan and Ishido-chan both took up more threatening and watchful positions around the villain. Analyze, I whispered, then added, Kai diagnosis. Name. Shota Izawa, Eraserhead. Race. Human, Quirk Metagene Positive. Age. 30. Level. 48. Active title. Health. Minus 2%. Stamina. 12%. Seance. 0%. Conditions. Broken right arm. Broken left leg. Major organ damage. Dying. The broken limbs were a problem. They had not pierced his skin, but they were not even close to properly aligned. So if I healed him too much, they would fuse together wrong, which would make things worse in the long run. But I couldn't leave him like this either. I had to get him above 0 HP, but not too far above. High healing, I mumbled. My energy began to gently flow into him. Damn it, 13 swore, my scanners aren't working thanks to the jammer. Ami knelt next to me. Her eyes met mine, and I blinked in acknowledgement. Broken limbs are obvious, she said, my mom didn't teach me enough to deal with this. But maybe I can get a sense with my hydrokinesis. Name. Shota Izawa, Eraserhead. Race. Human, Quirk Metagene Positive. Age. 30. Level. 48. Active title. Health. 7%. Stamina. 12%. Seance. 0%. Conditions. Broken right arm. Broken left leg. Minor organ damage. Unconscious. He is banged up, she said, looking at the analyze window. I guess even if our communications were blocked, we could still see each other's screens. 
Party invite, I'll meet, I whispered under her explanation that Eraser Head was hurt, but not in immediate danger. My headache spiked again, and her eyes darted back and forth in a covert head shake. Still, we can't afford to leave him here, 13 sounded somewhat relieved. Hey Oirozu, can you create sedatives? The pro asked. Momo started to reach for her helmet when the wall of ice exploded. I threw up a TK rampart without thinking, making sure none of the shards hit us. Thankfully, no one seemed to notice. They were too busy looked at the brute who had done in one punch what almost a dozen looks couldn't do in who knows how many blows. Then the eyes sticking out of his exposed brain locked onto his always sensei, and he charged us. Drive 4, I shouted, and jumped into his path. He seemed confused by that, and tried to sweep me out of the way. I caught his wrist and tried to redirect his momentum. He was strong, too strong. I intended to spin him completely around and hoped to send him a few steps back as well. I could barely turn him 60 degrees. He turned back and tried to push me. I jumped aside. And he immediately went for his always sensei again. I tackled his side, trying to pull him away. What is Noma doing? Shigaraki complained as he stepped through the hole. Trying to kill a racer, Harley noted, that was the last order you gave him, before telling him to break through the ice. Given what Sensei told us, we're lucky he went back to the last instruction, instead of just stopping once he broke through. Midoriya Khan, get back, 13 ordered, pointing her fingers at the giant. Harley. On it, missed us. And what are the rest of you idiots waiting for? Shigaraki glanced back, annoyed, as Harley tumbled forward, get over here and take out these kids. I dove away, as the fingers on 13's gloves snapped open. Only for Harley to land in front, and jam her own fingers into the slots. That should have killed her. Instead, there was not even a hint of the pull of black hole. 13, Harley's voice lost some of its squeak, and it sounded like she was lecturing, real name, redacted. Gender neutral. Quirk, black hole. Between her non-binary status and villain-like quirk, likely social outcast and bullying victim. Tried to refute that by becoming a rescue hero, despite having an offensive quirk. Quite the interesting psychological specimen. 13 was visibly shaken by her words. Then Harley's studious expression turned into a deadly grin. She slammed her sledgehammer into the side of 13's helmet. It wasn't a full swing, she was holding it one-handed and more than halfway up the handle. Even so, the glass in 13's visor cracked. The space hero stumbled back. Harley put both hands on the sledge's grip and raised it over her head. Then she actually flipped forward, spinning the hammer head around completely for extra speed, before bringing it down on 13's chest. Only to be stopped maybe a dozen centimeters away by three crossed and floating swords. Though I couldn't pay too close attention, because I was still desperately kiting Nomu, it looked like Mochan's blades intercepted the sledge a little earlier, and deliberately slowed it, and let it push them back. Better than just taking the blow full on. Then the swords pushed the bludgeon and its wielder back. Here comes a new challenger, Shigaraki complained. Are these yours, Blondie? Harley purred angrily. Her left hand slid up the wooden haft. Harley's fingers brushed the side of the flying katana. The next instant it dropped, clattering on the cobblestones. Mochan yanked her kirky and Claren back. The red marked broadsword disappeared, but the curved blade snapped into her left hand. The swordswoman charged in, slipped a foot under the katana's crosspiece, and kicked it up to her hand. She stepped in, swinging both blades at Harley from different angles. So you aren't just relying on your quirk, the villainous grinned, blocking the kukri and bending nimbly out of the way of the katana interest in form of Daisho. A little help here. Mochan hissed through gritted teeth, struggling to keep the heavy weapon at bay. Harley swung it easily, seemingly unbothered by its weighted balance. Mochan directed her call for assistance at Cassandra and Momo. Momo was preparing a long staff. And she handed a small remote off to Sirokan, since he aimed from the elbow, not the hand. But Cassandra was frozen. Though it was hard to tell through her mask, but it looked like her eyes were widened in fear, and her jaw slightly dropped. What is she? Cass, signed she isn't there. But she had sensei, so she is. It suddenly dawned on me. Cassandra couldn't turn her quirk off. Presumably she had gained it when she was a toddler like most people. For the last decade or more she had lived with it, always knowing if someone or thing was moving around her. At the same time, Harley hadn't disintegrated when he boss touched her. But the various finger holes in her costume said he had tried more than once to do it. She had stopped Black Hole, and seemingly severed the connection between Calibur Z and Mochan's katana. And I couldn't analyze her. So Cassandra could see and hear Harley, but her extra and most trusted sense was failing her. She's a power nullifier, I told them. That hit home for Cassandra, but she still did not seem to want to fight without a quirk. Would have been nice to know 30 seconds ago, Mochan groused. Sorry, I said, ducking a shove from Nomu and trying to trip him up. Not your fault, she admitted. Her weapons tied up the hammer, and Momo jumped forward, swinging her bow at Harley's head. The clown villain released her weapon, rolled between Mochan's legs, and pushed her into Momo's arc. She seemed to be hoping to make Momo fall on one or both swords. But my two classmates worked together, deliberately clashing their weapons to adjust their landings. Meanwhile, my other classmates and the villain Mux hadn't just been standing around. Ami, Ashido-san, and Sirokan had been exchanging range attacks with the invaders. 
Yida-sen was darting around, trying to take out the few melee fighters who had survived as always sensei while avoiding everything else flying around. He ducked under a gout of flame, less than a second before Ami's gout of water smothered the flames and sent the villain flying. He slammed his shoulder into the back of the female villain with gorilla arms. She sailed a short distance into one of the shooters, and Ida sen dashed off towards the next enemy. One of them locked her eyes on him and smirked. Gotcha. She let her target expertly. Her stony, snake-like hair lifted, and blobs of it shot at Ida sen Right into where he was running. They hit his legs. The gray masses only hit hard enough to make him stumble. Then they began to spread. Up and down his boots, locking him to the floor and keeping him in place. The next set spread over his chest plate and up to his uncovered head. Ida having not replaced him helmet after her lunch was interrupted. Prez Vashidor-chan ran over and began to melt the spread stone before it would cover his face. The petrifier took a shot at Vashidor-chan. The acid melted away the stones before they could spread. But her body could take a stronger pH and she struggled to find a balance that would keep Ida san from suffocating without also burning him. Queer Jerry, Shigaraki hissed. The teleporter eyed Sirokan carefully and then reappeared next to his boss. Why aren't you doing anything? The disintegrator asked in a dangerously quiet voice. The black-haired girl was able to plant a bomb on me. With her classmate's help, he inclined his neck to show the explosive. It is on a dead man's switch, and also has a distance limit. This shouldn't even work, Shigaraki sounded angry. Angrier. Again. She built it to run on ultrasonics, the mist subjected, and showed that it works. Is that what that is? A random look with animalistic features and a pained expression groaned. Come here, Shigaraki ordered. The humanoid mist stepped closer. Shigaraki brought his fingers to a point and tapped the bomb. It turned to dust. Kurajuri turned to face us, but his boss stopped him. Stay here for now. Instead he turned his attention back to me, and to Nomu. The giant was still trying to get past me to a racer head, but wasn't doing anything more than dodge me, or lightly push me aside. On my side, nothing I had done, whether it was martial arts or TK attack, seemed to do any damage to him. I was getting ready to break out Kai's slice, when Shigaraki distracted both of us. Nomu, stop messing around. He barked. We were warned the prototype unit was single-minded, Kurajuri reminded him after taking a moment to find the most diplomatic way to phrase it. Fine, Shigaraki growled, scratching at his neck. Nomu, kill that kid, kill the heroes, then kill the rest. Nomu looked at me. Then at Air he in 13. Then at both my classmates and the other villains. Then back at me. Then at Azawa again. Here was it more appropriate, given how they talked about him. Either way, Nomu seemed to be confused. Locked up. Bah. I don't care the order, just kill anyone who isn't part of the league. That seemed simple enough for the monster. He drew back his hand, and finally launched a real punch at me. It was faster than I expected, and I had to both turn to avoid it and block with both arms. Minus 100, health, minus 150 energy. They seemed to have found him. A man in his late twenties, completely bold. He was sitting in a meditation pose, his face scrunched in concentration. His head was a bit too large for his body, and he was wearing a t-shirt and dress pants. The three students were concealed by a craig at the base of the mountain zone. Hiroshima started to charge forward, but both Mikoto and Sayu grabbed his shoulders. Trap. Sayu asked. Probably, Mikoto nodded. Then what do we do? Hiroshima asked. Mikoto took one of the discs off her costume. She did not flip it into the air like usual. She didn't want it to be spotted, and didn't need the additional power buildup. She instead fired a quick weak shot, just enough to knock him out. It hit him dead center in the forehead. He pitched backwards. All might. Mikoto called into girl chat, as the ache subsided, All Might, the USJ has been invaded by villains. They have us trapped in trying to kill us. We need. She trailed off. While she was calling for help, a hand had emerged from the dirt. It grabbed Jammer's shoulder. Then it sparked, shocking him back awake. Then the second villain pulled himself out of the dirt. Wake up Jammer, he complained, I can't protect you and act as your backup at the same time. He was wearing a skull mask and a black combat vest. Now that you fired, I can feel you out there, he declared, lightning dancing between his fingers, you might as well come out. Nakoto waved for Tsayu and Kirishima to stay put, and stepped out. Just one. He demanded, where are your friends? Did they already get taken out by the others? Or are you plotting something? My plot is just that I'm going to take out that guy who is blocking our phones, Nakoto shot back, and you too, if you try to wake him up again. The skull mask whistled, and two more villains pulled themselves out of the ground. One was a black-haired woman who was muscular except for her skinny right arm. The other was of unknown appearance and gender, due to a thick coating of mud. The magnetic shots ain't gonna work on the three of us, he boasted, I'll just deflect them with my electrokinesis, Lash will knock them aside, and they won't do jack to mudslide. Sorry, girly, but since the Southside Shoguns joined the League of Villains, ain't nothing gonna hurt our new pal, Jammer. Especially since blocking signals is a pain in the neck for you, and you can't do it as well, right Blackout? The female villain prompted. True dad, Blackout agreed, shifting his skull mask, vibrating my body all gives me a crick. And I can only stop electrics, not all the other things Jammer can. 
though it might be worth it to have you give me an ekrub lash. Annoyed and curious, Mikoto shot a slug at each of them. Blackout's body sparked, and the disc stopped before it hit him. The second one just sank into the clay-like armor body of Mudslide, with seemingly no effect. And Lash's thin arm extended like a whip, knocking the last coin into the ground. Bet it. You magnets won't work on us. I think you're the one who doesn't get it, Mikoto smirked darkly, lightning crackling all over her body. I don't have a magnetic quirk. And I never actually said I. Lash's arm shot out at Mikoto's face. Only to be deflected by Tsai's tongue darting out from the outcropping. That I was alone, Mikoto finished. The Ogitashinori was regretting his choices. Burning his timer earlier that day specifically. But also his decision to teach her at UA in general. He sipped his tea, as Nezu continued his long and winding lesson about the tea growing culture of 18th century China, and how it related to modern hero work. Might. Mikoto voice in the girl chat got his attention, all might, the USJ has been invaded by villains. They have us trapped in TR. The message was cut off midward. And the next instant, All Might was standing, in his muscle form. The Khan, Nezu prompted. I just received a message that the SJ is under attack, he told the principal, I must go. That's a moment, Nezu said, his quiet voice commanding, how did you get this mess off, Midoriya-kun's power? But we observed the SJ for the morning classes, and none of the alarms have gone off. Nezu hopped down and scampered over to the wall. He touched an apparently nondescript section. And the screens which had blended in seamlessly into the lounge's wallpaper lit up. Nezu gestured again. And they all showed static. I did not think Midoriya-kun was the type to be a party to a prank, but this would seem to confirm it. Then I will go, All Might proclaimed. Take midnight, too, Nezu ordered. Sir, I. She has a free period, and can meet you outside, Nezu continued, even allowing for the normal indiscretion in her reported weight, you should be able to carry her without reducing your top speed. Since you do not know what you will find, I will not send you alone. The rest of the faculty and I will join you as soon as we can. Then the mouse bear dog touched a different panel. Midnight Sensei, he said over the paw, please meet All Might Sensei at the front entrance to the main building. All other teachers, as well as lunch rush and the big three, please report to the vehicle bay. Class representatives, please return your classmates to your classrooms if not already there, and keep them there in calm until further notice. All Might was already gone before the announcement was halfway finished. And it took less than a minute for the R18 heron to reach him. What is it? She asked, all business. A message indicating a villain attack on the SJ, where class 1 is training, he confirmed, kneeling down so she could climb on his back. When we tried to check, it seems all communications with the SJ are cut off. She nodded and jumped on, carefully avoiding his left side. As soon as she was aboard, he took off with the speed most race cars would have envied. Might. I suddenly heard Makoto's voice in gold chat, all might, the SJ has been invaded by villains. They have us trapped in TR. She was cut off, but I wasn't sure if the jamming had been restored or she had been interrupted. Party at all might, I whispered. But nothing happened. I dropped to my knees, under Nomu's punch at my head. He was too strong. Normal use dodge skill was to move just enough to barely avoid being hit. But the force of his attacks was still damaging me. Even with my physical resistance and TKOR. From the crouch, I pushed off with both legs, driving an uppercut into Nomu's solar plexus. He skidded back less than a centimeter, but otherwise didn't seem to notice. What is the skid? Shigaraki complained, how is he pushing Nomu back? Part of me wanted to scream in incredulity. That punch would have dented tank armor. And that wasn't theoretical, I had done it in a dungeon. Dented the tank boss and moved it further. When both my strength and TKOR skills were lowered by a debuff. Based on my earlier attempts at throws. Minus 12 health, minus 12 energy. Ognomu weighed a lot less than the tank. Something was keeping him in place and also increasing letting him hit like a truck. It had to be his quirk. Maybe something that changed his density. Or something like TKOR. No, I had managed to sneak in a pair of Kai slices when I was close and no one would see. They broke his skin, but it healed almost immediately. I wanted to analyze him, but didn't have time for the distraction. Not with him legitimately trying to kill me, and one direct hit probably being enough to do the job. Ha. Huh. I'm muttering without even talking. Stop that. Ashido-chan and the stone villainess shouted at each other in unison, as I jumped back to avoid a haymaker. Momo and Mo-chan, or Team 3 Mo as I found myself thinking of them, were still fighting Harley. Cassandra broke out of her fugue and was helping Ami and Sirokan mop up the mooks. Iida-san was still trapped, and Ashido-chan had been working to keep his face from getting covered. The villain seemed to have it in for Iida-san and kept attacking him. Ami had been helping, keeping the stone shooter from adding any more creeping mud to the trap speedster. The petrifying material seemed to have a limit, either in time or surface area. So after a tense minute, it stopped spreading. Ashido-chan mentioned starting to free Iida-san. But at almost the same time, one of the bigger villain and Cassandra drifted between Ami and the stone shooter. So Ashido-chan had to switch, splashing her acid to stop the incoming clay bullets. Which in turn resulted in a sort of stalemate, and the two of them complaining to each other. Hey, Cassie, Mo-chan said, as their fights drifted close to one another, I can get why you are nervous to fight this winch. 
That's when she summoned to you, little girl. I'm used to relying on my quirk, too. As soon as I realized I inherited my father's quirk times three, I focused on controlling swords, fighting at a distance and keeping myself safe while having a wider view. Almost like playing a third person game. I cringe. Ha, that's pretty cool, Shigaraki sounded impressed and slightly jealous. But my father, my dad, and my aunt Rin, Mo Chan, use the English word ant here, too, they force me to keep practicing swordsmanship with my hands. And even learn a little on armed combat. Because I never knew when I might encounter someone like a racer sensei, or otherwise make my quirk ineffective. But you, you are better than me, the blonde knight continued, they taught me that the idea of an unarmed fighter being a match for a swordsman was mostly a myth. Sure, a master unarmed fighter with an anti-weapon style could easily take out novices. But if their skill levels were even close to the same, and the sword wasn't hindered by terrain, the knight or samurai would have a major advantage over the martial artist. In all my training, that bore out. Of course, I still learned some kicks to use my whole body, and punches for in case I was disarmed. Cassandra, you are the first person to make me doubt that. You can fight, with or without your quirk. And frankly, we could use your help, because I can't figure out this clown's style. In got one, Harley countered in her sing-sung voice. Then she swung her hammer around at full extension, like Link's spin attack, forcing three mo back. Izuka Midoriya. Health. 277-696. Energy. 211-1186. After the first big hit, I had been doing my best to simply get out of the way. But like I said, it was easier said than done, and the pressure from his attacks was still eating away at my health and energy. As was the extended use of Drive 4. It had only been about 5 minutes, but it felt longer. At this rate, I wouldn't last another 10 minutes. I was tempted to activate Kai healing on myself, but that would just eat my energy reserves even faster. Minus 50 health, minus 10 energy. That one actually clipped me, and I stumbled. I rolled out of the way of Nomu's overhand smash, taking nothing that time. But with my health below half, I was started to get bruises and feel the impacts. Ami noticed. Like the others I had told her about Gamer's body, in basic terms. But she also seemed to have some medical knowledge from her mom. So she knew better how low my health must be, for me to have these sorts of visible injuries. She gestured, and a ball of water wrapped around Nomu's head. Unlike with the Bakugan mid-boss, she covered him completely, trying to drown or suffocate the monster. I hate hydrokinetics, Shigaraki scowled, Kurajiri. The portal opened under him, and the next instant he was falling on Ami. His hands extended towards her. She reacted quickly, putting a wall of water between them. But the liquid immediately began to boil away. No, it wasn't boiling, it was splitting back into hydrogen and oxygen. He could decay even the water. It was slower than when he touched his minion. And Ami kept adding more water. Still, with the decay and the force of his drop, he forced Ami down onto one knee. His hands were pushing forward, ever closer to her face. She only had so much water, and the fountain was empty. Ami grabbed a chunk of ice, trying to slam it into the back of Shigaraki's head. Kurajuri's portal intercepted it, and Cass had to dodge the projectile. Ami splitting her concentration cost her. Shigaraki's hands were now centimeters from her face. I couldn't let him. It was one thing I had been holding back. Wanting to save points for later, and get there on my own. Plus, I had no way to know what I would actually get. But any little boost might make the difference at this point. That six to all attributes, I said softly. It felt like my brain caught fire and exploded. I barely kept myself from screaming and falling to my knees. And everything seemed to just stop. Status changes for Midori Yuzuku. Max health. 696, 780. Max energy. 1187, 1319. Attributes. A strength. 49, 55. A ability. 49, 55. The endurance. 49, 55. Cuteness. 49, 55. Wit. 47, 53. Intuition. 49, 55. See charisma. 35, 41. Determination. 58, 64. A luck. 23, 29. Unspent points. Attribute. 84, 30. Skills. Analyze, W, Battle Scan, 48, 49. Mathematics, Basic, W, 18, 19. Dodge, AQ, 31, 33. Telekinesis, ID, 38, 39. Strength Training, S, 19, 20. Basic Karate, A, 39, 40. Yoga, A, 12, 13. Physical Resistance, BD, 70, 72. Acrobatics, A, 21, 22. Kai Detection, DI. 28, 29. Kai Slice, DW, LB. 18, 19. Telekinetic Attack, I. 25, 26. First Aid, with A. 7, 8. Mathematics, Advance, W. 5, 6. Tactile TK, ID. 22, 25. Telekinetic Armor, I. 23, 26. Telekinetic Ore, I, LB. 33, 34. 
Kung Fu Fundamentals, Kiri, 2021. Tai Kai Quan, AS, 16, 18. Kai Diagnosis, DW, 8, 9. Telekinetic Ramp Part, IE, 17, 18. Clairvoyance, IW, 7, 9. Omic, My Looney Playthrough. Bah. I don't care the order, just kill anyone who isn't part of the league. I am joining the league. I announce immediately and loudly, in fact, I'd like to announce my candidacy for league treasure. Embezzling is mandatory, right? Nomu blinked. Which shouldn't have been possible, what with his eyes coming directly out of his brain and no eyelids. Then he turned towards Azawa Sensei again. Both my teachers are joining, I insisted, but you'll have to wait until they wake up to confirm it. I will join as well, Ami caught on. Sure, me too, Mochan nodded. How are the league's medical and dental benefits? Yida Sen asked, his body contorted from when and how Stino's petrifying bullets hit him, I am interested in joining, but may need a chiropractor. Liu, Ashido Sen Han shot up, do you have cookies? Yep, Harley confirmed, and a good kind, not healthy crap like oatmeal raisin. Harley. Shigaraki snapped. Sorry, Miss Sauce. So, since we are all members I started to address Snomu, but was cut off. Just kill that green-haired guy, Decay Bart. I dashed over to one of the tables still standing. I grabbed a ketchup bottle. I crushed it over my head and use my TK to help direct it. The result was me having messy brown hair, where the condiment was thin, with red streaks, where it was thicker. Then I grabbed a relish bottle. I pointed it at Shigaraki, and did a bit of math. One karate chop and another round of TK, and the green goop was covering his hair. I pointed to my head, then to his. And then Nomu turned to his boss with a snarl. Not me of, he all but shrieked, him. What did 13 call him? Midoriya. Kill Midoriya. I'm not Midoriya, I proclaimed quickly, I'm Shigaraki Tamar. He's Midoriya. What? No, I'm Shigaraki, he's Midoriya. No, I insisted, he's Midoriya, I'm Shigaraki. No? His voice went up five decibels and half an octave, he's Midoriya, I'm Shigaraki. He's Midoriya, I'm Shigaraki. I countered. Oh no, Harley sighed. No, he's Midoriya, I'm Shigaraki. The villain screamed. No, he's Midoriya, I'm Shigaraki, I declared, then as quickly and angrily as I could, continued, I'm Midoriya, he's Shigaraki. No, I'm Midoriya, he's Shigaraki. Nomu's head had been darting back and forth between us as this went on, and now he was staring at me again. He's right, I admitted. Then I grabbed the last bottle, the mustard. I jumped onto Nomu's shoulder and filled his ear holes with the yellow paste. Wait, no. Shiga fake Midoriya complained, as the monster charged him. But his protests went unheard. Ten minutes later, it was over. Shigaraki was unconscious, and probably heavily caucused after taking multiple blows to the head. Nomu was a pile of ash. And we were tying up the rest of the defeated villains with Siro Kun's tape. Harley glared at me as I wrapped her. Her lips and cheeks were swollen due to the punches she took, so she lisped heavily as she spoke. You're deplicable, she informed me. Ba ba. Ba I started to say something, but stammered slightly when I saw the degree of clothing damage Ami, Momo, Mochan and Ashido had suffered. That's all folks, I concluded, looking away. Chapter 25. It seems obvious in retrospect. Especially now that my intuition and wit were both peak human. But throwing 24 total points at my mental attributes, instantaneously, was going to give me a headache. All those new neurons and neuronal connections forming. But between what I can only guess was my increased endurance and determination, the latter being a double-edged sword in this case, plus gamer's mind and body, it faded to a moderate ache after a few seconds. Except I couldn't move. It wasn't like I was tied up or numb or anything. But like my limbs weren't responding. Or my eyelids either. And it was not just me. Around the mass of pop-ups, I could see that Nomu was also frozen. Beyond that, neither Ami nor Shigaraki were moving, either. Was I dying? Had I fried my brain? Was this the theoretical phenomenon where your brain keeps going over the last thing you saw, as your last moment stretched out seemingly forever? No, there was a message. That was dumb. Awesome, but dumb. Minus 24, health, condition added. Migraine. And now that I was looking, there was a message box like I hadn't seen before. This one had larger text, and some of it was flashing red. I closed the condition alert, and looked at it. Limited time offer. Free trial run. Early access talent. Pause. Normally you have to meet the qualifications for this talent, you don't, and then receive it as a quest reward, this isn't. Instead, one time only, you can trade your peak human quickness bonus talent, peak human wit bonus talent, and peak human intuition bonus talent to gain pause. And you are even getting one free use of pause before you decide, to help you make up your mind. Okay, so I wasn't dying and seeing my last moment. Time was just frozen. But I guess it made a sort of sense. Almost every video game had a pause function. Except I couldn't go to the toilet or get some water, because I was the player and the character both. So what could I do? What could pause do? I focused on the word pause and thought hard, analyze. Talent. Pause. Skills. Unlocked. NA. Cost. 100 energy. Limit 3 times per recovery rest. Duration. 5 minutes. Prerequisites. 
quickness 101 wit 101 intuition 101 reflective dungeon b quest reward effect freezes time relative to the gamer cannot move act use any skills that consume energy or use other skills that affect the physical world can observe plan take a mental break and access the menu system for example user cannot pause and then launch a barrage of telepathic or telekinetic attacks for when normal time resumes user can pause and calculate a trajectory try to decipher a password or prepare to activate a skill once pause ends user can end the effective pause at any time before the five minute duration technically time is not frozen the gamer mentally experiences when you toss it as 300 seconds because it is pure perception that is why energy cannot be used that meant things were still technically moving but a quick dive into the math and physics knowledge my skills afforded me plus analyze for a definition let me calculate that even something moving at light speed would travel less than half the radius of one proton in that amount of time and when i read the duration i noticed a timer in the upper right side of my vision opposite the concealed health bar it said 428 and was counting down but if i can access my menu that means i could spend points right which was in line with many traditional and action rpgs of course, I couldn't change all my clothing and eat a full three-course meals like Link could, but it was still an advantage. Like now, I could have just spent the individual points to get most of my attributes up to 50, instead of quickly throwing out a number guaranteed to get them all up there. And spared myself a migraine. Also, it appeared that Analyze was still available, since it did not require energy, and I had just used it to learn about pause, and get the definition of a Utoskind. Yes, that seems like a loophole. Plus one weight, plus one intuition. Which meant I could, Analyze. Ignoring the messages, I looked at Nomu. Name. Prototype anti-symbol of peace Nomu. Race. Nomu, altered former human, Cork Medigene Overload. Age. 33. Height. 195 centimeters. Weight. 219 kilograms. Level. 7. Active title. Anti-symbol of peace. Quirks. Shock absorption. Natural steroid. Pure muscle. Pain nullification. Super regeneration. Health. 4083-4083. Stamina. 2438 2656. He had five quirks. How could he have five quirks? Even Todoroki and Cassandra, who seemed to have two quirks, really just had one quirk with two parts to them. A few more analyzes didn't clear it up. My understanding of what Nomu could do was better. Unfortunately, that also made me more worried. Shock absorption reduced bludgeoning damage to Nomu by 96%. And any other physical damage by 64%. And damage below a certain threshold was simply negated. But it did take one stamina each time it reduced or neutralized damage. Natural steroid was a mutation type quirk that gave him plus 50 to his base strength, and a plus 200% growth multiplier to strength as well. Which would have been bad enough, but pure muscle made it so Nomu used strength instead of endurance or quickness. So just increasing his strength would make him faster and tougher. The only comfort was he still had a separate agility score. I estimated based on his level and health that his strength was over 600, probably close to 700. Pain nullification not only prevented him from feeling pain, it also all but eliminated Nomu's sense of fear. And any other physical ailments caused by pain, like localized paralysis from hits to a nerve cluster. And super regeneration was why my Gondor smashes healed almost instantly. It converted 1 stamina to 5 health every time Nomu was injured, up to 100 stamina per second. It would even restore lost limbs or damaged organs. If we could destroy both his brain and heart, he would die. That, or we had to drain both his stamina and health fully. I had just over 3 minutes left after I finished scanning Nomu. I needed to pick my bonus talents, decide if I wanted pause, and try to come up with a plan. I guessed that the trial offer for pause would likely end as soon as I picked it, and definitely would end as soon as I rejected pause, or picked on of the 3 bonus talents it would replace. So I would make the most of it and save that until last. But better to start soon. My bonus talent options for strength were. Pump you up limit break strength training skill and gain latent bonus to strength, based on level of strength training skill, plus 1 latent strength for every 5 levels of strength training. Will of muscle use strength instead of determination to defend against mental attacks and mental status ailments. Mental muscle increase weight and damage of telekinetic skills based on a percentage of your strength. The first one was nice. Latent bonuses meant less for attributes, which didn't have a natural cap, than for skill, which did. Still, the bonus would be a nice positive spiral for strength. The second skill was basically worthless for me. My determination was already higher than my strength, and gamer's mind already improved my resistance to mental attacks. Ultimately, I chose mental muscle. It added 25% of my strength to the mass of projectiles for TK attack, and also the damage of those projectiles by the same factor. The same applied to any other telekinetic damaging skills I might get in the future. And for TK skills that move things but did not damage them, it added 50% of my strength to the weight I could lift instead. The random talents I was offered for agility were 
Evasion greatly reduce incidental or out damage on a successful dodge. Wall run limit break parker and can run nearly horizontally on walls, depending on quickness and parker level. Contortion is plus 10 to yoga skill or unlock it, limit break yoga. Yoga was an okay skill, but I wasn't going to waste a talent on it. Wall running was tempting. I was teenage Japanese boy, of course I wanted to be a ninja. But ultimately, I was losing health quickly to no Ms. near misses. Even if evasion didn't completely prevent it, decreasing the drain on my health and energy was critical. And evasion would continue to be useful in the future, if I could get out of the kill zone of a grenade, the shockwave and shrapnel would do almost nothing to me. Endurance offered me the choice between. Recovery boost increases healing received by 20% from all sources. Stamina boost increases stamina by 10%. Acid Adaptation plus 10 to Acid Resistance Skill or Unlock It, Limit Break Acid Resistance. They were all pretty straightforward. My energy was currently based on Kai and Mana, not Stamina, and that would change based on my current highest attributes. So Stamina Boost was a no. Acid Adaptation was nice, but since I was thinking about healing myself after time restarted, I decided on Recovery Boost. My quickness choices were mostly about movement, including another Parker-related talent. My intuition options were related to non-combat skills. Though one was for telepathy and clairvoyance, which would be good for the eventual operation to save all might. But it really only gave me one option. I mean, there were three. But the first one invoker increased the damage of my spells. Which would be great, if I could figure out how to unlock magic. The second was called spell resistance, which instead of reducing damage, gave me a percent chance to just ignore spells cast on me. Again, very useful, if I had any enemies who use magic. That just left me with Omniglot, which limit broke every language skill, including signing. Even the ones I didn't have yet. It also increased the growth of language skills by 20%, which was really great for skill and future hero work, but not of immediate use. With the first three screens cleared, and the pause the other three moved to the side, I saw an unexpected window. Congratulations. All physical attributes have reached peak human tier. Please select a bonus talent. Fighter. Improved mastery of melee combat, plus 10% damage dealt, minus 10% damage received. Free runner 2 plus. 5 latent bonus to dodge, running, parker, climbing, swimming, and acrobatics. Only two options, but both were really good. If it weren't for the current situation, I would be more inclined to take free runner 2 dot, but instead I focused my mental eye on fighter and clicked it. That left me with just over a minute. To decide if I would take pause of the other three talents. And to plan what to do once time started. Having been reminded I had a telepathic attack skill, which I hadn't spent points on or tried to use, I checked on it. It was mostly for breaking through mental defenses. It would do a small amount of health and Sion damage to anyone whose defenses were down, or did not exist. But since Nomu didn't have Sions, and would regenerate more HP per stamina than I would do in damage per energy, it wasn't worth it to try now. Glancing through my available talents, one jumped out at me, and a plan formed, at least for the immediate situation. So I bought Focus. Telekinetic Attack. I also realized if I spent all of my attribute points, I could get my Charisma and Luck both up to 50. Which should give me 3 more bonus talents, possibly 4 if I got another one for getting all 9 attributes up to peak human. But I wasn't sure if those talents would be helpful here, and I wanted to save those points. I was even more tempted to just split them between strength and quickness, and try to hammer Noma with punches and kicks as fast as I could, to wear him down. Every hit would take 1 SP from him. More if I could break through his defenses. But no, there might be a need for me to suddenly boost my Sionic Sakai. All the more reason to consider pause. For now, execute the plan to protect Ami. Once I made up my mind. Pause. Or 3 other talents. I had about 20 seconds left to decide. Chapter 26. I decided not to take pause. Not because I thought the other talents, in any combination I could come up with, would be better or more useful. No, the cost of pause was too much. 100 energy was 7.6% of my total, so if I used it all 3 times, that would be almost a quarter of my total energy. But on the other hand, since I could effectively only use it 3 times per day, along with the cost, there was a good chance I would hoard it for just the right time, and end up not using it that much at all. Of course, there was at least one way to get around that. If I bought efficient sleep and used the time dilation of a dungeon, I could get the recovery in two and a half real world hours, instead of eight. Even then, it wasn't something I could do in a fight. There was also the danger of losing the tension of a fight. Also, I could easily see myself distracted and not realizing time was about to run out. So even though I knew I might never see it again, I decided pause was not something I wanted now. If I did get it in the future, I might be better prepared for it then. Still, it hurt to let it go. Setting my doubts aside, I pulled up the other three screens. I focused on my choices. For quickness, I would take hop to unlock and limit break the jump skill. Omniglot from wit would limit break any language skill and increase their growth. I wondered if I learned a bunch of languages, if I could confuse people by switching between them at random. And intuition would be mind's eye which would limit break both telepathy and clairvoyance, and give me a minor boost each. 
Except I didn't have telepathy yet, so I wasn't sure if it would be added or not. I had access to it, but hadn't tried it. Pick hop on the glot and mind's eye I thought as quickly as I could, fully expecting time to resume and ready to launch my plan. Except it didn't. The windows all close, including the special offer one, but the last 012 on the timer kept counting down. Jump, LVL5, unlocked. Telepathy, LVL2, acquired. Clairvoyance is improved, LVL12. Congratulations, telepathy rank, 2 halves, clairsentience rank, 2 halves, and psionics rank, 11 tenths. Sense hostility, LVL1, unlocked. Did I just unlock Spidey Sense? I thought quickly, and then analyzed the new skill. It wasn't quite the same as the fictional hero's power. His power detected danger. Well, except when a writer decided to change it or circumvent it. My new skill only detected hostility towards me. That meant that while Spider-Man could detect and react to falling beam inside a burning building, I couldn't. Unless someone else was making it fall deliberately. On the opposite side, Peter couldn't tell when someone was hostile towards him, like J. Jonah Jameson, but wasn't going to act on it. I could. The description also indicated that at higher levels, I would be able to detect hostility directed at members of my party, or when I was targeted by a machine, even though it wasn't hostile in either the sentient or emotive sense. To one time jump back to normal speed. Goodbye pause. The buzzing in my head returned, I almost hadn't realized the headache from the jamming, and the aches from the hits I had taken were gone. But there was more to the strange feeling, a like a shaking halo around my skull, stronger in front of me. I shoved it aside, I only had moments. High regeneration, reinforcement strength, I said quickly yet softly pulling my arm back. My energy was already ticking down from TKOR, but it began to drop from the other two powers. In return, my health began to tick upwards. But I wasn't done. Go beyond. I roared, as I dropped to crouch, plus ultra. Izuku mid rear. Health. 264 680 minus 100 from plus ultra. Energy. 782 1320 Minnesota smash. I drove my fist into Nomu's stomach, pushing up with my whole body. I expected my arm to shatter, or at least to take a lot of damage. But I didn't. Maybe it was because I was getting better at combining Kai and Sionix. No, more likely it was because so much of the force was neutralized by shock absorption. Even with Nomu's first quirk, his HP bar dropped by between 4 and 5%. Then began to refill while he lost stamina in return. But the damage wasn't my goal. It was good, but the reason for my smash was to get Nomu off the ground. He lifted a few centimeters into the air. I immediately flattened my hand against his abs, and focused all three flavors of my telekinesis on him. Hogwarts smash. Even with the addition of mental muscle, Nomu was too heavy for me to properly use as a bullet with TK attack. But adding TK and tackle TK to effectively lighten him, I was about to send him flying. Rather than shooting off like a major league fastball, he tumbled through the air like father lobbing a softball to a toddler. Or at least like I had seen movies to pick plane catch. Nomu was still moving pretty quickly through the air. And he was heavy. And most importantly, my aim was true. Moments before Shigaraki decayed his way through Ami's shield, he noticed the shadow falling towards him. He instinctively reached up with his left hand to protect himself. Ami dove back while he was distracted. Nomu and Shigaraki collided and they collapsed into a heap. Shigaraki pushed his monster off and surged to his feet, staring death at me. Then he remembered his power. Nomu's right arm was on the ground and rotted away. He struggled to stand, his shoulder much more slowly falling apart. Above his head, I watched as both his health and stamina ticked down. Super regeneration was fighting decay, but decay was winning. The disintegration had almost reached his neck. Harley. Shigaraki barked. The clown villain swung her hammer white again, knocking Momo down, and Mo-chan was forced to jump clear. Rather than capitalize, Harley flipped back twice, landing next to Shigaraki. He grabbed her stomach. A new set of fingertip holes melted out of her costume. They stopped when he touched her skin. Then the rod on Nomu also stopped, and his arm began to grow back. The monster drew back up, and his eyes locked on me. Before there had been a sort of generalized aggression and desire to kill there. Now he was looking at me, recognizing me. He wanted to kill me, not just because it was an order. Constant bloodlust has burned into your eyes. Since hostility skill improved, LVL 25. Hostile aura effect acquired. Hostile aura. You can see how hostile someone is towards you expressed as a fiery aura. This only works on people you can see, but does not interfere with the more generalized version of sense hostility. Kurajiri stepped up behind his boss, and the petrifier also closed ranks. I took the break in the fight to analyze her, learning her villain name was Sino, her quirk was Gorgon Shot, and she was level 21 the same as me. The aura around her was slightly pulsing in orange. The glow around Kurajiri was closer to red and more active. Shigraki was wreathed in a dense, seething, or black aura. Harley only had a thin, slightly green aura. I guess she either didn't think much about me, or was the kind of villain who could kill without much hostility. And Nomu's aura was quickly going from yellow to red as he stared at me. Disable hostile aura, I whispered. I would practice with it later, but for now it was confusing and obstructing. What are you? 
Shigaraki hissed at me. He reached up towards his neck, but Harley caught his hand. Siro finished tying up the other villains, and was trying to get 13 clear. What does that mean? Ami's eyes narrowed angrily as she studied him. This kid was matching Nomu blow for blow, Shigaraki said, even if Nomu wasn't going all out since it isn't all might. And now his wounds are healing even while I'm watching. Are you some sort of mirror boss for my Nomu? Do you have multiple quirks, too? Hey, we're the heroes, you're the villains, Hashido Chan Bart, so your monster is the mirror boss for Izuku, not the other way around. I don't have more than one quirk, I said firmly, and if you think I have to have more than one quirk for this, you need to study more, because I can think of four quirks off the top of my head that could account for this. Tactile telekinesis and perfect cellular control, Ami said immediately, but what are the other two? Telepathic illusion, I said, this could be a mirage, but a mental one, so Nomu felt the hit and jumped back. And from what I have heard, Lantern's quirk could probably do this, too. But then I'd be glowing. Enough, Shigaraki cut me off, Nomu, override protocol 1. Do whatever it takes to kill. I missed the remainder of the statement as Nomu charged me, faster than he had been moving before. Reinforcement quickness, endurance, I said, already moving out of the way of his first punch. This time I took only a point each of health and energy, despite the noticeable increase in the power behind his fist. Thanks to sidestep, quickness would help my dodge. The endurance boost would reduce both any leftover damage I took, and the damage from using Kai reinforcement and TK aura together. I was counting on my new evasion talent to deal with the rest. I didn't need accuracy right now. He was a big, unskilled target that didn't even try to evade. I didn't need power either. Any hit I landed would be mostly absorbed and almost instantly healed. But so long as I landed the hit, and did at least one point of damage, that would drain two of his stamina. He had just under 1400 stamina left after recovering from decay. Gunner smashes would do more damage, since they cut. But I would run out of energy too fast. If I focused on the fastest punches and kicks, and could hold out for 5 minutes, I would be able to drain him. Except I wouldn't last that long, not without using plus ultra again. And that had severe diminishing returns. It wouldn't matter how much energy I had to heal myself or reduce damage, if my health was so low that a single hit would kill me. But every minute I bought was a chance for my classmates to escape. Or return. Or for hell to arrive, since mom and all might should have heard Makoto, too. I fired two strong right crosses into Nomu's ribs as he recovered from overextending himself. Then a shallow kick to his knee. He lashed out again, and instead of dodging or blocking, I stepped in and punched his wrist as hard as I could. Then I rotated and drove my elbow into his navel. He tried to grab me, but I skidded between his legs. Then bashed my knuckles against his kidney. Or at least where a kidney should have been. I still want to kill this hydrokinetic, Shigaraki continued. Harley and you, deal with the rest of these brats. Kurajuri, back us up, but also check on how the other locations are doing. Last thing we need now is more pests. Sino tried to capture Mochan. Cass countered the incoming mud with her cape, before hitting a clip and letting it fall away. Then Ashido-chan sprayed all the villains with acid, regaining the petrifier's attention. Momo, help Ami Cassandra, signed I will help Mochan deal with Harley. Are you sure? The tall girl asked. Kane nodded sharply. Momo touched a button on her helmet. She created two, hollow, extendable batons, and stepped between Ami and Shigaraki. Harley looked at Cassandra and smirked. Finally found your nerve. The red and blue had taunted. The next instant Cass was next to her. Grabbing the haft of the sledge and ramming her knee into Harley's stomach. Because if not, that's fine and perfectly normal, the former psychologist said a bit less certainly. Still, she twisted her weapon free and forced Cass back with a thrust of the hammerhead. Then she grinned again. Psych. She jabbed the butt end of the sledge at Mochan. The swordswoman blocked with both blades. Harley let the head of the hammer drop to the ground and used it as prop to swing her heel up backwards. She nearly clipped Cassandra's chin. Actually, court dependency is a moderately serious neurosis, and can lead to social isolation and deeper psychosis. You should talk to Counselor Hound Dog. Or work with Eraserhead Sensei to spend time without your quirk. You know, if you and Eraser both survive today. Okay, Blackout panted and, looking at his fallen comrades and the two approaching students, dropped his street accent, maybe we can negotiate. Sure, Mikoto smirked, closing her fist on the coin she had been ready to shoot, you two stop blocking our signals, sit down right here, and let my friend paralyze you with her oil. How is it a negotiation? Jammer opened an eye and spoke for the first time, his voice high and ready. Because if you don't, her grin widened, then we will figure out what combination of tasering. Sparks danced across her fingers. Blunt force from her. Hiroshima slammed a fist into his palm. A fist that looked more like battering ram than a human limb. Or toxic oil. Sue squeezed her fingers, and her mucus dripped onto the stone. It takes to force you to stop, she concluded. Jammer didn't consult with his guard. He clambered unsteadily to his feet and walked over to where Makoto had indicated. He held out his hand towards Sire, and the buzzing in Nakoto's head stopped. All Might. Nakoto's voice entered in my mind again. But this time she wasn't cut off. I hear you, Yun Misaka, All Might said, and we got your early message, too. Midnight and I are one our way, and the rest of the teachers and additional reinforcements are not far behind. 
what is the situation? Fortunately, telepathic communication was faster than talking, due to not needing to take a breath or move your tongue. We quickly described our situation to him. My body went into something like autopilot while doing so. The skills etched into my body by the gamer and the fights in dungeons, reacted without need for much conscious thought. If it wasn't for the fact I was spending so much energy to keep up with him, I could have fought Nomu indefinitely. Health minus 20, energy minus 5. Okay, don't get cocky, B. I was thankful to get a report from Michako. Her group had been in a tighter spot than I realized, but Todoroki and company showed up in time to save them. Achako's health was just below half, and her stamina and seance were both nearly drained. Still the six of them had boarded the train and were moving steadily back to the center plaza. We should join you, Tutsu said. No, you need to stay there and keep those villains honest All Might said. Right I agreed, having girl chat back, and the ability to use our phones is more important. But that said, there is something you could do Makoto. Sure, what? She asked. Can you hit one or two of the sprinkler pipes above the square? I requested, if they can simulate rain, they should have a good flow rate. And Ami could use the recharge. The hydrokinetic glanced up. Shigaraki had destroyed some more of her ammunition, and Momo's weapons, too. But the two of them had each managed to put a few bruises on him. Ashido was in another standoff with Stino, it seemed like it might come down to which of them ran out of material for her quirk first. Cassandra and Mochan were actually pushing Harley back. And Sirokan was shooting his tape at Kurajiri. He was being careful not to shoot too much or cut it off too soon, so when the Miss Villain tried to teleport it at one of us, Sirokan could pull it back. We will be there shortly All Might said, just hold on. Shindizuku just used a dungeon to bring you here. Achako asked. That would give him away Cassandra said. I'm not worried about that I countered. Maybe not. But Midnight would not be brought along, which she All Might reminded us, and if I disappeared at this speed, she would be hurt. Even if I slowed down, she would still be left behind here. It isn't that desperate yet Ami confirmed. I'll add you to my party anyway, All Might I insisted, in case things take a turn for the worse. Even as I sent the invite, I heard a trio of rapid-fire sonic booms. Then a second set, and a third. The first coin nicked one of the pipes, resulting in a gentle spray that drizzled onto us. The second one bounced off the reinforced dome. The third one punched through the dome, letting in a ray of sunlight. The three coins of the second round all missed the pipes, but two of them put more holes in the ceiling. None of the last three breached the roof, but two of them did punch completely through the whitest part of one pipe. This completely drenched Mo-chan, Cassandra, and Harley, none of whom looked happy about it. I turned off Kai healing. I was now well above half health, and needed the energy more to prolong the fight. Thank you Ami told Makoto silently, even as she gathered up the water and dried casts and the Dura-san in the process. Harley looked even more annoyed, and the grey makeup covering her face began to run. Shigaraki Tamer, Kurajiri said before his boss could launch into another rant, I am receiving the signals of Mindy and the other exceptional candidates we chipped. With the exception of both Jammer and Blackout. Stino spared a second to give her left arm a glance. If you can detect the others that must mean the jamming is down, the pale villain said in annoyance. Yammer has to be down, Harley noted, locking the Mochan's Kukri and then kicking a Cassandra's chest, but we didn't test Blackout that well. He was able to cover an area greater than this facility, Kurajiri objected. Yeah, Harley agreed, but we didn't check for how long. He could be running out of steam. It could be one of the students, Stino suggested, those shots just now look like they came from about where Jammer's group is. And like they came from that lightning girl who shot at us before that eraser guy attacked. If she and Blackout got into it, they might have fried the chips, and any other electronics in the area. Either way, Shigaraki grimaced, it means time is up for this raid. If we stay here much longer, Yue will figure out what is happening, and we'll be hit with a flood of mid-bosses. But before we go, maybe we can farm a little more X. Ami didn't let him finish. She slammed a cube made of water into Shigaraki's face. His neck snapped back, and the dismembered hand clutching his face went flying. Father, he said plaintively, almost whimpering. Then his head slowly pivoted back down, forward. His now uncovered face was sporting a new gash and a rapidly darkening bruise. His eyes had widened, almost to nine proportions. But his eyes and pupils had narrowed down to almost nothing, and were darting around wildly. That gave him a greater look of insanity than he had worn until now. And sense hostility was buzzing wildly. Shigaraki put his fingertips together like a beaker drill. It wasn't a comfortable way to hold his hands, but it was the small area for touching something with all five fingers. Then he began to jab at Ami, almost like someone using a pressure point technique. Only less precise. Each strike eliminated about a third of a liter of her water. She continually replaced it, but the broken pipes were providing less with each second. Momo stepped in, swinging her newly formed Najinata at his neck. Shigaraki's left hand intercepted, his digits now in a straight line instead of a point. They met a blade, which turned to dust before leaving even a line on his skin. He pushed his arm further out, right from Momo's left breast. Ami swept her back with a soft pulse of water, and Momo returned the favor with a gentle push of the Najinata's crumbling haft. That bought them barely a second, before the villain went after Ami again. Lopatin, Harley said sadly and worriedly. 
Then her lips thinned, and her fighting shifted from acrobatic and slightly comedic, to more brutal and direct. There were still spins and cartwheels, but they were tighter. And more used to build force. Crack. Harley had swung at Mochan. And while the British girl's two blades had caught the sledge again, Harley threw herself and the weapon forward, putting more of her weight into it. Though Mochan slowed it, the hammer continued. With Harley's stretch, it went past Mochan's right gauntlet and connected with her elbow. Which resulted in the loudly audible sound of what was doubtlessly bones breaking. Mo Chan grimaced but did not cry out. The katana hung more loosely in her grip, but she did not let it fall. Cassandra launched a heavy barrage to give her teammate a moment to recover. Only for Harley to unexpectedly reverse her hold and jab the hammer's butt end into Cass's midsection. The force of the hit both pushed Cassandra back and into range of Shigaraki. Even though she could read the villain leader's movements, her recovery slowed her for a moment. And sparing an attack from his rage at Ami, he tagged her face. Which turned to her advantage. Cass was one of the few of us who was covered head to toe. She didn't just push his hand away, she hammered it. While it lacked the volume of Harley's attack, she had broken at least one of the bones in his wrist. Then Cassandra slid back, yanked off her disintegrating cowl and hood, and tossing them aside. Come on, Stino hiss, almost like a mantra, come on. Even as the petrifier kept shooting at Ashido Chan, her hair started to twitch oddly. The villain who called herself Stino, had 27 tubes of rocky hair. And when she didn't directly control it, it moved on its own, almost like the snakes of her namesake. Now they trembled slightly. She was in one of the rooms the League had set aside for Harley Quinn's training regimen. In front of her were a half dozen mannequins, acquired from somewhere. And behind her was the source of her trepidation. She had been through the Americans fighting training, and heard about the individual sessions she had had with the other villainesses. The say Sino was not looking forward to this was an understatement. Okay, Uriel, let's see what you got, the clown woman declared brightly. Actually, it's Sino, she objected. Really, Harley sounded surprised, the oldest most violent sister. Even better. Stino was moderately impressed. But, she supposed, it was actually more surprising that she, as a Japanese, knew about the Gorgons, than it was for a Westerner to know about them. She shook the thoughts away and aimed at the first dummy. She could only get 20 of the hairs to aim at the human-sized target. She fired. Seven of the clay globs struck across the mannequin's body and limbs. The rest sail passed all around it, hitting the walls and floor. Is that all the more accurate you are? Harley asked dubiously. Stino bristled slightly, but her fear of the League's American lieutenant kept her from showing it. No, the petrifier said simply. The next round, all 20 bullets hit the second dummy's chest, 18 forming a large blob over his heart, one closer to his neck and the last over the stomach. Stino immediately fired at the third target, 10 shots hitting its head, 4 on the upper chest, and the last 6 missing. Okay, Harley sounded a bit more impressed, so why didn't you do that the first time? Stino pointed to her first victim. It was already completely encased in stone. The wider spread on the target means the stone spreads from multiple points, trapping them faster. On those two, they might have been able to get off a shirt or a helmet before their arms were trapped. And it's been twice as long and they still aren't fully covered. Besides that, the shotgun approach means it's more likely some of my shots will hit a moving target, and it is better against small pack groups. Harley nodded, her lips pursed thoughtfully. But you can only target one at a time. Harley said, but less sharply than before. Well, I can also do this. All Sino's snakes pointed straight out. And she began to roll her neck. If I shoot like this, it is really random. Good if I get surrounded by cops or heroes, but not very useful when I'm working with others. So, you have your targeted attack, your shotgun version, Harley noted, and your death blossom. Not bad. You've obviously put more thought and effort into your court than most of these yehus. Stino was not familiar with that English word Harley threw in. But she could guess what a yehu was from the context. So for now, the clown continued, let's work on getting it so you can shoot at two targets. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed some of Stino's hairs twitching oddly as she chanted to herself. Then suddenly her eyes widened and she smirked. Not unlike Harley's smirk. Then the hairs on the left side and back of her head shifted, so they were pointing at Ami. And the others continued to rain clay on Ashido-chan. Ami, Stino. Ami, the petrifier. Cassandra and I shouted in near unison across guild chat, even as the villain began to shoot at two of my classmates instead of one. It hit me what had happened. The gamer's manual said from the beginning that normal people would subconsciously spend their skill and talent points. Stino had just bought the next level of Gorgon shot talent. I just hoped aiming at multiple targets was the only benefit she got from it. Ami got our message, and used some of her water to intercept the attacks. The clay did not turn to stone around the water. Instead, it seemed to mix into the liquid, turning it into something like mud. Something that Ami could not control. Shigaraki renewed his attack, as he recognized his henchwoman was eliminating Ami's ammunition. During the few seconds Cassandra bought her after escaping Shigaraki's touch, Mochan transferred her katana to her still working left arm and hand. And the Kukri went back to being manipulated by her quirk. I hoped it was confidence in her skill at avoiding Harley's power negation, and not desperation, that drove her to take the risk. 
The melee between the three women seemed to kick into a new gear. Sirokan tried to snag Kurajiri again, but the villain opened a gate, sending the tape at me. And this time my classmate was too slow or tired to pull it back. I ducked under it, and the tape hit Nomu's chest. The monster roared at the annoyance, and tried to pull it in. Sirokan severed the line with anxious haste. The tape slinger and the teleporter seemed to be evenly matched. But I realized Kurajiri wasn't trying very hard. Or, to be more accurate, he was multitasking. Even as he kept Sirokan busy, he was also keeping an eye on Shigaraki and Harley, and to a lesser degree, Stino and Nomu. Beyond that, every few seconds his eyes would stop flickering for a moment. He had mentioned tracking chips, so he must have some sort of device to scan for them. To Mura Shigaraki, the mist said reproachfully, there are six students inbound from the urban area. They will be here in just over a minute. Mindy and four others from the mountain have recovered and are on their way here, but it will take them at least twice as long to arrive. Fine. Their leader shrieked, just get rid of that Spider-Man one-up, and then be ready to pull us out. I still want to have Nomu kill that green kid and finish this water bitch before we leave. As you command, Kurajiri intoned. The next instant, a portal opened under Siro's feet. He shot a line at one of the light posts. But a second portal opened to keep him from securing himself. Instead, Siro Khan grinned. He fired tape from his left elbow, into the middle of the strip from his right. Then he pulled both of them, causing the longer tape to curve back. I'm not going alone, my classmate declared as his cork finally attached to Kurajiri's neck brace. Ingenious, the villain said, but incorrect. Though Kurajiri was dragged toward his own portal, the instant Siro was gone, the portal snapped shutter, cutting the tap cleanly. Siro Hanta was fooling. Then something grabbed his waist, pulling him into strong arms and a soft chest. What are you doing here, Kiro? Sayu-chan asked, as she set him down. The warp villain sent me away, he answered, so I wouldn't interfere. Their boss is crazy, and determined to kill Midoriya and Mizuno. The other three students looked worried, but Mikoto continued to glare at the four villains, daring them to try something. It was a stupid move. I figured it out a moment too late. I punched. Nomu punched. Our fists would meet. We would both be moderately injured. And the fight would continue. But that was wrong. Shock absorption was defensive. It not only protected Nomu, but limited the blowback on me from hitting him. But it didn't stop his offense. The impact from his punches wasn't lessened, even though it should arguably be. Whether it was some sort of subconscious effort on Nomi's part, or just quirks following their own logic, shock absorption wasn't going to protect my hand from this. Maybe not as either, but it was too much to hope for. I poured all the focus I could into the TKOR and TK armor around my left hand. Health minus 238, energy minus 55. Ten of the bones in my hand and wrist shattered. Another five just broke, and the rest cracked. All my fingers looked like purple blood sausages, and I had no control over them. Even through Gamer's body I was gasping in pain. But I didn't have any time. I dropped under Nomu's next punch. I launched a sweeping kick as I descended. I knew it wouldn't work alone. Bunner smash, I put an arc of short kai in front of my leg. It sliced deeply into his ankle. Cleanly cut his Achilles tendon. Nomu listed sideways for a moment, until super regeneration fixed him. At the same time, I activated my own healing power again. But my energy was barely over 100, and instantly dropped below. Sino had a sheeter chan pinned down still. Or maybe I should say even more so, since even with only half her hair aiming at the pinket, Ashido was more on the defensive than she had been up to now. The petrifier was also taking pot shots at Ami and Cassandra, with her newly developed split aim, robbing Ami steadily of her water, and keeping Cass from focusing fully on Harley. Mochan still had two weapons, but have to be more careful with her shorter, floating blade. She also seemed distracted by the pain of her elbow. Cassandra was caught between three fights, Harley and Stino, trying to force her into Shigaraki's range again. Ami was running out of water, and Momo hadn't created anything since her Najinata was destroyed. And Kurajiri was watching us all. All might I said, reaching for a table, I'm sorry, but we're in trouble here. I have to bring you over. No, don't he responded firmly. Why not? Momo asked desperately. Because. The USJ dome shook. The giant armored steel doors burst in, one blown off its hinges. All might flew through, having hit them with a jump kick. He touched down on the upper landing amidst the unconscious, and recovering villains as always sensei, and sometimes Nomu, had taken out. Then he jumped again, crashing heavily into the square behind the villains. I am here. He finished out loud. And All Might was not smiling. Midnight hopped off his back, instantly cracking her whip. So, the boss finally shows himself, Shigaraki cackled madly, it looks like we have a time extension on this raid. And that's a wrap, legendary crew. Part 6 took us on a wild ride, right? If your excitement is off the charts, drop a comment with your gamer tag and your thoughts on Deku's evolving powers. I'm all ears. If you haven't joined the legendary crew yet, hit subscribe, become a part of the action, and let's keep this momentum going. Massive love for your continuous support, you guys make this journey legendary. Stay tuned more epicness coming your way. Stay legendary, my crew, and until next time, this is your boy Chrono signing off. Catch you in the next level.